Good morning, YouTube. How are you? Hope you guys are ready this morning because you're in for a long one. So I was just hanging out last night and Chantal decided that she wanted to do a very late live. And the late live went on for over two and a half hours. And what was going on with her? What was she mad about? Well, a little bit of everything. I mean, she was literally pulling out all the stops, talking about a lot of things we've heard a thousand times before, talking about Yaba and Sam. Uh, she also revealed that she spends her free time reporting people, reporting different reaction channels. She even showed it on screen. And she talked about suing YouTube. I mean, she talked about so many things. And I sat there watching a good portion of the live, just, just trying to figure out why is this woman so angry? And just trying to go over all the things of why she might be angry. And I thought to myself, you know, it can't be because she's depriving herself of food because she's not doing that. Not that she has to because she is a diabetic, which would make her medically exempt from fasting on Ramadan. So if she's not hungry and angry, uh, she's taking care of the hunger. What could it be? And I just sat there watching her and watching her and watching her, just trying to figure it out. And I kept thinking about the old classic vintage foodie beauty. The one that she loved to run around YouTube and kick the hornet's nest. And she would kick at different people on purpose just to get them to react to her. Maybe part of her anger really wasn't anger. It's just her desperation to get views, to get people to watch her. Because a lot of reactors are turning away from Chantal. Y'all remember my last react where I told y'all like a lot of reactors, they're already reacting to other people as we speak. They're including other people into their content as a fail safe in case either something happens to Chantal or Chantal gets so boring that people don't want to watch. So a lot of reactors are including different people in their content. Maybe this is making her upset. Maybe she wants the spotlight solely upon her and the only way that she can get it upon her is to rage at everyone which is exactly what she did <laughs> but the ego on this one tonight who was a lot it was so much that even though i was watching her last night i thought to myself you know like i'm gonna save this for in the morning this is the kind of react that i need an entire pot of coffee <laughs> and i need my sleep I get this is it's gonna be a lot. <laughs> so so here I am. It's morning. I just made a pot of coffee and I'm here to react. We got a lot of stuff to go over on Twitter. Uh, so this is gonna be a long one, y'all. Feel free to break it up in pieces if you need to, if you want to watch it all, or just watch a little bit here and there, whatever you want to do. I, I recommend a pot of coffee uh, or some tea or milk tea, whatever you like, uh, while you're watching this, because it's it's going to be a long one, I'm telling you. So don't yell at me if it's a longer react. <laughs> I've been avoiding all of her boring stuff on purpose, because I'm like, I don't want to. This one is react worthy, so we're doing it. And unfortunately, it's going to be one of the longer ones. So let's just get into it. Okay. Let's go into the Twitter stuff. All right. So let me just pull up Twitter. I got so many Twitter notes. I was collecting them last night and not knowing what Foodie was going to do, I actually downloaded the live just in case she decides she wants to get rid of it or she wants to private it. I download it because I don't, I don't trust her. Whenever she does a live or a video that's juicy, you better grab a copy because you never know if it's going to be up there the next minute, the next hour, the next day. She might leave it up. She might not, but grab a copy while you can. So I did. So this react is going to happen, Chantal, whether you like it or not. I've already got my backup. Anyway, we're on Twitter. Uh, this, it's, this is uh, my Twitter, Wild Girl Sarah. Let's start here with Hidden Truths. 
Hidden Truth says, the one thing she hasn't been terminated for that is on their TOS is, your channel isn't terminated or linked to an account that has been terminated. But then she gets a plaque after buying subs to reach 100K. It takes two weeks to get a plaque. Yeah, that happened. Chantal just released a video showing she got her silver play button plaque. It could be a fake. It could be an absolute fake. I mean, she did get her plaque really, really fast. It could be a fake. The letter that came with the plaque looked very sus. It, the paper did not look like official paper. It, it looked too cheap, in my opinion. Like, that's what I noticed right off. But, yeah, she did a video showing, I got a 100K silver play button plaque. She bought that plaque. Whether it's from YouTube or not, she bought that plaque. That She did not earn that plaque organically like everybody else does. She bought her way to it. So it's a cheap victory, Chantal, but have fun. All right, this is from O oh Things To Do. I like this picture. That's why I'm sharing it. When I look at this, y'all know what I think about Key West. I grew up in Florida. This reminds me of Key West so much. What a cute little house on the beach. I think of Key West. This is the Key West house right here. <laughs> I love it. All right, Cowboy Dog says, proof that Salad doesn't give a crap about Chantal. He doesn't walk in and stop her stupid ranting to help her have a successful Ramadan. Yes, yeah, speaking about that, Ramadan is supposed to be a time from uh, just doing your praying, abstaining from overindulgence. I mean, just doing charity, doing good deeds, uh, things of that nature. And Chantal's already screwed up Ramadan. Even if she is medically exempt from Ramadan and she's not fasting, she could still do what she can to do Ramadan. M meaning, like she could still do charity work. She could still be a good person. She could still pray. She could still read the Quran. There's many things that she could do as a Muslim woman. Uh, that would, you know, like help her get through Ramadan and be good through Ramadan. If she can't do the food, there's other things she can do, but she's not. But where is Salah in all this ranting? Why isn't he stopping her? Why isn't he walking in saying, hey, cut that out? This is this is a time of prayer. This is a time of good works and charity and good thoughts. And you are just so against that right now. Where is he in all of this? Why isn't he stepping forward? Uh, Hidden Truth says, Foodie Beauty, how do you go from posting about being morally and religiously correct to raging during Ramadan priorities? So, yeah, she posted this. Here's one of the pictures uh, uh, showing an iman. And, and then going from that to this, <laughs> what happened last night? How do you go back and forth, Chantal? Uh, Miss Anthropo Lulu says a giant monument for an absolute failure of a human being with zero friends and literally no life. You too can win a prize. All you have to do is be a total degenerate, file fake DV essay charges, fart, hurt animals, eat enough for two and 200 pounds cosplay a Muslim. Yep, I guess that's what you got to do to be 100K. I'll pass. Thanks. Uh, I'd rather be myself than live a life where I'm hurting people and be completely empty inside. You know, she can have it. If that's what it takes to get a play button plaque, I'll, I'll pass. Thank you. It's, it's not that important to me. Uh, Punch cat posted this thing. This is her favorite spot because the heater keeps her warm. Oh, look at the little baby. You know, what's funny about that? Cats love warm spots. They do. Booger is all about the heater that I have at my house. The cats love space heaters, fireplaces, warm windows, anywhere that's warm. They love to stay warm. As a matter of fact, last night <laughs> I was trying to react. I wanted to react, but it was really late. And Booger, she's kind of an older cat. She's like 11 years old. And she, she's like an old lady. <laughs> you know, she's like an old lady. She, she tells me when to go to bed. She wants me to go to bed 
because when I go to bed, then she can curl up on me or she wants to get beneath the covers with me and go to sleep. So I was thinking about reacting last night, but Booger was like, no, 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 no. It's like two o'clock in the morning. Why aren't you in bed? She was just all up in my face, all up in my arms, like go to bed now. <laughs> but cats do love their warm places. They adore them. And this kitty's got the right idea. Like, hey, it's warm over here. Don't don't judge me. Uh, Jolie says, wow, barely a 1.5K views after three hours. It's looking bleak. Yeah, I was watching Chantal's live and I was nosy. I wanted to peek to see how many people were in Chantal's actual chat. Y'all want to guess the number? 13. 13 people. Miss 100K channel, 13 people. And mind you, this was not the start of her live. It was like an hour later, two hours later, 13 people. And she had open chat. It wasn't VIB uh, only. It was open chat. Only 13 people. And while she was doing her chat, she was extremely condescending. To people in the chat you guys will hear it when we get started but yeah even with her raging at everybody and basically calling people in to fight with her which is exactly what she did when chantal's desperate for attention when she's mad at salah not only will she go after reactors but she'll she'll call anybody into the fight just to keep the fight going and i've known people like her i was in a relationship with somebody a lot like her. He wanted attention too. He didn't care if it was negative attention or positive attention. It was still attention. But we'll, we'll bring anything into a fight, make any topic fight worthy, just to keep fighting. And she did that through the entire live, just talking about this, 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 this. It's, she's doing like the, I call it the pearl necklace effect. Where you like you, you start off with one pearl and then you put another pearl and another one and another one and just to keep it going so that the, the string never runs out. You're just you're one thing and another thing and another thing next to each other just to keep the fight going. Had an exit did that, drove me nuts. All right, so this is from Shenanigans. Why the change of thumbnails, Chantal? So I guess it went from a picture of Julia to this. Well, if I had to guess, Shan, why she did that, because she knew that the the, the the wrong reaction time of receipts thumbnail would get the most attention. Chantal knows what she's doing when she makes thumbnails, when she makes titles. She knows how to get attention for her channel. She knows how to clickbait people. She's even admitted to clickbaiting. She wants people to watch her. And a lot of channels have backed off from watching her from reacting to her, a lot of people are pulling away. They're like, she's too boring. There's nothing to talk about here. So she will result to cheap tactics to keep people interested. But you know what, Chantal? That only works for so long. If there's no quality content, people get bored, they go elsewhere. And the only solution at that point is to turn it up, you know, turn up the content, give some quality versus quantity. Uh, Florida Salt and Sass Points says the same way she played with the community with the cat. She's doing the same to the followers who aren't there to troll her. And while it's their choice to be there and choose that weird parasocial relationship, it's no less cruel to panic about diabetes one month than do this. Yeah, that's a game that Chantal likes to play with her subs. She likes to go back and forth. One minute, she's making everybody worried and concerned for her. She talks about her health issues, her sciatica, her high blood sugar. Oh, look, everybody, my blood sugar reading is 5,000. She wants people to worry for her at the same time that she's not willing to take care of her health. It's a very cruel, sick, twisted game she plays with people that she wants to care about her like oh I'm, I'm going to configure things to where you care about me i'm going to make it seem like i care about you just so i can play games with your head and with your emotions i'm going to keep you forever worried about me 
you know, and then I'm going to show my blood sugar reading of 5,000. But then later on, when I come on, I eat Lakmas. None of you better come to me and say, why are you eating that? Your blood sugar is up. You're leading people to get irritated at you, Chantal, just to turn around and criticize them for criticizing you. Although you open that door by showing your blood sugar reading, which is dangerously high. I mean, you're playing this back and forth ping pong game. You do that with your subs. And for anybody out there that's watching Chantal, maybe you've made your way over here. Maybe you're part of my audience. Maybe you're a sub. Because I have noticed, and it's happened on more than just my channel. I've noticed something. I've noticed there are people that sub up to the reaction channels. They stay subbed up for a long time. And they act like they are a, a sub that, you know, supports the channel. But then they'll jump out of the woodwork and say some nonsense that, that makes no sense. You know, like they're trying to kick up some dirt and cause some problems. I've noticed that lately more than one channel has been dealing with that. Uh, it's happened with me in a recent live chat I did. But just like what? Anyway, anywho. <laughs> What was I going with this? I lost my train of thought. Um, I'll get it back in a minute. I, I was trying to make a point, but then I, I just got away from me. We'll, we're, we'll keep going. I'll bring it back in a minute. Uh, Florida Salt Sass Point says, this is why no one is a bad person for not pretending she was a good person and saying it's a loss when she shoves off this mortal coil. As messed up as the Beezers are, many care in the way she plays with their weird emotions like this is cruel. Now I remember what I was going to say. What I was going to say is someone like Chantal. I've dealt with that in a past relationship like years and years ago. Someone almost exactly like her. They got that evil, manipulative nature. That attention-seeking, soul-sucking, energy-draining nature. Energy vampire, if you will. The only way to cut that off is to completely walk away. There's there's no other way to deal with it. Trust me. Until then, that person that's treating you like that, they will forever play games with you. You're a little toy in their hand. They'll, they like to play with you just because they can. She likes to play with her subs. She likes to play those little mind games. You know, keep everybody worried about her. I don't know how the people on Chantal's side can stand it. Like they can't just tune in and watch her and relax. She won't allow for it. She likes to keep everybody freaking worried about her. Like how do you, anybody who's a Chantal sub, look, you don't have to talk to me. You don't have to answer me, but I'm just wondering out loud. How, how can you sit there and watch her and be happy watching her? When she's so not about that happy content, when she's all about making herself sick and making you guys watch, haven't you guys figured out by now she doesn't care about her health? Somebody who has got extremely dangerously high blood sugar to the point where they're taking three medications and then they're turning around and doing massive mukbangs and eating lakmas. You know what they're saying to diabetes? That's what they're saying but they're not caring for it. And there's no possible way, none at all, with her diabetes being the way that it is, with her food issue being what it is, and it's massive, that she's ever gonna get better as long as she's on YouTube being monetized. Trust and believe that. As long as she, as an active, raging food addict, has an avenue and a forum where she is being paid and her addictions are being paid for and funded and enabled, as long as she's got that safety net, she's never gonna get better. YouTube was the worst thing in the world to happen to Chantal, the worst thing. Because if she had not wandered onto YouTube and got monetized and made the money that she had made, would she be as unhealthy as she is right now? Nope. She wouldn't have had the money to indulge 
and overindulge every obsession and every addiction that she's come across. If she's just a regular person with a regular salary, she would have been able to order takeout three or four times a day for years. She would have been buying all that green, all those party favors. She might be a heck of a lot healthier. Like YouTube gave her the platform and said, here, make a channel. And she did. And, and she has abused the privilege, in my opinion. And she's hurt herself. And it's getting worse. And so all of you that are her subs, th th this is what you're watching. Somebody flushing their health down the toilet. In fact, it's, it's all the way flushed. And I hate to say this. I'm not being mean here. It's not a question of if. It's a question of when. There would be an if, if she cared for herself, if she truly cared for herself and she went to inpatient and she got therapy, there might be an if, but it's, she's not doing that. So it's just a matter of when. It's just a matter of when. She doesn't want to fight for the if. She's just going to settle for the when. So it, it's her choice. It's her life. Moving on. Uh, Florida Salt Sass and Point says, and... We're back to using grandma dying as an excuse for acting out. Her grieving rage made her do it. It hurt, hit her so hard when she had time between chasing Natter and was the, one of the only ones there for her. She was ad addicted to Coca-Cola and taking a lot of it. <sighs> Chantal, even though it's not my grandma, I'd like to ask you something. Can you please... Leave your grandmother alone. Respect your elders. You used your grandma. You were taking money from your grandma. Okay? You were taking money from grandma until one of your relatives said, hey, cut that out. You were taking money from grandma. And when grandma was sick, you weren't there for her. We remember that stream you did where you went over to the house and you were you had your face in the camera. Grandma was in the other room moaning in pain. You couldn't be bothered to check on her. And all that time you spent running around with Natter, you knew how sick she was. You didn't want to go see her. You were too busy being up Natter's behind because you didn't trust him to stay alone for an hour. And the one time you did go see Grandma, you made sure to take a selfie and post it all over the internet, which I thought was in truly bad taste. That should have been kept private. Using your sick, dying grandmother for brownie points to make yourself seem relatable or human. Ew. And Chantal, I've I had a grandmother. I've actually had two of them. My great-grandma and my grandmother. And I miss both of them. I miss my mama and I miss my nana. I would never. Why do you keep insisting on using your relatives to make yourself seem like a good person? You're not. You're absolutely not. Okay. You, you, if you loved your grandmother, you wouldn't talk about her. You'd leave her alone. Let her rest in peace. Stop using a dead relative as an out as an excuse for your bad behavior. Stop it. I mean, I'm not trying to trauma dump here. I'm just using an example. I lost my sister and I lost my dad. First, I lost my, my sister. And then just a few months after that, I lost my father. Does that mean I should have the excuse to go out and, and act wild? No, not at all. You know, everybody processes death differently. I acknowledge that, but the way you're going about it is gross. Quit it. Just quit it. Uh, perfectly Imperfect says, well, at least foodie beauty, everyday Miriam finally admitted she was over 400 pounds in her latest rage stream. Let's watch. Like, like I say, always say nobody wants to be 400 pounds. You know, but it's not just as easy as that. People act like, well, then change. Okay, I'm going to bring this up. She did another stream. I forget which one it was, but she said she was 535 pounds. 
I believe that one. I knew she was over 400 pounds because when she was with BB, she was really close to 400 pounds. Then she was like 20 something pounds away from 400. And anybody could look at her then and look at her now and tell that's a huge difference. So she's well over 400, y'all. Come on now. She was 373 pounds back in 2018. So just like less than 20 pounds or a little over 20 pounds shy of 400. And look, I think she's well over five. I'll die on the hill with that. And you know what, Chantal, if you went to an actual hospital with a scale that could take all of your weight, if it reads 400 pounds or under 500, I will gladly apologize for my mistake. I'll say I was wrong. I'm woman enough. I can say I was wrong, but I don't think I am. But if you were, if you were 400 pounds, if you were 370, if you were 350, you would get on a scale and show us because you're that kind of person. But the fact that you're not getting on a scale is telling. Like that's just so such a lack of, that's such a, that's low. That shows so much ignorance. In, in itself, that statement right there. By the way, Chantal, on the note of you being 400 pounds or 500, ma'am, I don't know what's going on with your bias, but you're wearing the same one for days on end. Um, I hope, I really hope that you have multiples that all look the same. And it just looks like you're wearing the same one. I hope that there's more than one going on here. But if you just got one Abaya and you're not changing clothes and you're not bathing, that's just gross. I have been noticing that you've been doing that thing lately that you used to do with Natter. Where you want it, like you, you could smell yourself. But instead of taking a shower and cleaning yourself, you'll you'll you spritz yourself with cologne or perfume. Yeah, I used to do that back in the Natter era. And lately you've been spraying the Beezer spray on you. Girl, come on. The Beezer spray ain't going to do nothing for you. Look, if all you can do is tell, Nat tell Salah to leave for a few hours, strip yourself naked. You've got a washer and dryer there in the house. Take the Abaya off. Put it in the washer with some soap. While it's washing, go take a shower. After you're done taking a thorough shower from head to toe, wrap yourself into a blanket or something. And then after the abaya is done washed, put it in the dryer. If it, that's all you can do is just take the one abaya and wash it over and over and over to keep clean, do that. Because wearing the same one over and over is gross, mama. But we've been noticing that we, you're, you're wearing the same clothes and you're not changing clothes. Okay, Georgette Duncan says, I'm supposed to believe she only gained 20 pounds between these two photos. So yeah, this is this was Chantal back in the BB era for anybody who's never seen. There she is. On the left, that is Chantal. Uh, I believe it's 350, 370 right here on the left. And this is Chantal on the right. And no, this this photo is not Photoshop. This is this is this is a still from her latest video. Yeah, that's that's more than a 20 pounds difference. That's at least 50, 70 pounds, maybe a hundred. All right. Oh, this is something cute from All Things Interesting. These are baby alligators. Listen. You're such a sweetheart. Aw. Yeah, they sound like lasers. I wonder if they that's what they use for video games. Uh, Wonder Mob says, what did we learn today? Foodie Beauty thinks we are sick and stupid. Diabetes is not about the carbs, but the fat you eat. What? Uh, there are no problems with her filming B moments and making money with it because she can't control them. She doesn't need to seek help for it. There is no help. Wait a minute. Stop right there. Okay. Diabetes is not about the carbs, but the fat you eat. Chantal, are you stupid? 
ma'am, carbs turn into sugar. I'm not a diabetic and even I know that. Carbs convert to sugar in the bloodstream. That's why you got to be careful with carbs when you're a diabetic. Is it, the fat is the, the fat is part of the problem, but you got to be careful with them carbs. The carbs will make your blood sugar spike. There are no problems with her filming B moments and making money with it because she can't control them. Oh, oh, wait a minute. So she said that I haven't watched. The, I haven't. I'm not doing the react yet. Wait a minute, y'all. Did she say? She has no problem filming B moments. So she's admitting that there are B moments. Thank you, Chantal. Thank you for telling on yourself. So you're admitting that your mukbangs are B moments. Got it. Oh, is you can't control them? So you're basically saying to YouTube, I have a problem with food. I do have issues with food and I cannot control myself. Hence the very reason why you shouldn't be doing mukbangs at all. Right? You shouldn't be doing food content. You can't control yourself. And you can't pull in other people who are mukbangers and say, well, they're mukbanging. Why can't I? Because they don't have an issue with food. You do. If you have no self-control, you have no impulse control, you got a raging issue with food, you should be doing food content, period. Not cooking content, not mukbang content, nothing. Because you're going to get constantly triggered to eat. That's why you can't do it. Uh, she doesn't need to seek help for it. There is no help. Really? Hold on. There's no help. There's no help? I love proving this witch wrong. Y'all give me a second. Do, 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 do. Let me look. <sighs> I'm looking. All right, y'all, y'all can, you've been clocking me, right? I just did a quick search. There's no help, right? There's nothing, she says. Okay. Challenge accepted, Chantal. What's this? I just did a search. Okay, and there's many different hotlines here. Many different ones for different eating issues. There, there's this this one, the Hope Line Network, uh, Multi Service ED Association, United Ways 211, Crisis Text Line. All right, like so. There's no help, right? There's no help. That's funny. I just found help. I just found it. How about that? Okay, we're going back to Twitter. No help. Yeah, you know what? That's because she doesn't want the help. If you're not ready, you're not ready. That goes for any issue, any addiction, any obsession. If you're not ready, you won't seek out the help. When you're ready, you will. When, you, when you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, when you've hit the wall and you just say to yourself, I can't go any further, that's when you'll seek out the help. Not before. She's not ready. She's not going to be ready. Uh, are you serious? Is everyday Miriam in her reports of channels? Yeah, like she actually got on screen showing all these channels that she's reporting. So we got garlic bread. We have the YouTube underground. We got Doe Eye Cookie. We got Kaya, uh, French Fry Girl. Yeah, she actually got online. 
with her big fupa balls and she showed the people that she's reporting. So during this time of Ramadan, when really she should be focusing on having more peaceful thoughts and doing good deeds and praying and being around other people, uh, no, no, she, she showed what she's spending her time on. She's spending her time reporting people on YouTube, reporting different channels. That's what she's doing. Uh, Perfectly Imperfect says, I don't watch reaction channels. Busted. Uh, side note, I love that she's obsessed with Goose Chuck. Hey, stupid. <laughs> I love it, too. I love it so much. I love it the most. <laughs> Goose Chuck is awesome. Let's see. Yeah, they got garlic bread, YouTube Underground, doe-eyed, French fried girl. Who else? Goose Chuck. Targeting Goose Chuck. Why are you mad at Goose Chuck for, uh, foodie? Leave her alone. Uh, are you serious? As she reported the video titles and or thumbnails, even her reports are low effort. Yeah, going after a thumbnail or a title. When she herself uses the clickbait titles and thumbnails to get people watching, imagine that. The clickbait queen reporting other people's thumbnails. The nerve of her. Uh, Ghost Crap says Chantal is up at 10 a.m. on a Saturday during Ramadan, raging at other people. She hides behind an avatar and is alone. Why is she not with Salah and his family? Why is she not out and doing something? Why is she not at least spending time with her husband? These are all great questions, Ghost Crab. Where is he? Why isn't he stopping her from acting all the way the fool? Where is Salah? You know, when things like this happen, all it does is reinforce the thought that She's alone most of the time. She's absolutely alone. Uh, Flora Salt and Sass points as uh, Chantal is angry that her two outpatient visits to the ED, ED clinic isn't being taken seriously as her getting treatment. The ED help outlets, they're discriminating against her because of her being fat. What? What a crock of nonsense that is. That just tells me she didn't go. She did not go to that place or those places. Hold on a minute. I, I'm, I'm doing some more research again. I'm wondering if there is a place like that. I'm looking to see if there's anything like that. All right. All right, so I'm going to show this to you guys because, you know, we like our receipts over here. I'm just doing this for context. Hold up. So I just looked up, you know, Places that help with food issues in Kuwait. This was the only one that I saw. The SOAR Center for Professional Therapy and Assessment. Where exactly are they? So there is a place that could help her if she wanted to go. And that's in Kuwait City. So I guess you have to go to a doctor or something to get uh, an assessment. So they know what to do with you. And, and you know, Chantal, like, there's just too many steps for her. But she's like, there is no help, right? Didn't she say that? There is no help. Funny how I keep finding the help. And I'm not even the one that needs it. Okay, back to Twitter. I love proving her a liar. It's so much fun. My favorite game. Uh, Florida Salt and Sass Point says, it's okay about Allah's wife, too, because they made her really angry. Yet, she, remember her going after Allah's wife, calling her a Sharmut, even though Allah's wife did nothing to her? 
was making all kinds of claims about his wife. And I do remember seeing pictures of her being over at Allah's house. I remember seeing, I remember those pictures very clearly. What I remember the most about them is that Allah's wife was actually sitting on, she was sitting on the floor so that Chantal could sit on the couch. And Chantal was propped up with a bunch of pillows behind her. So imagine that being, it's your house, you're the wife to your husband, but out of respect for a guest, out of care for a guest, you'll sit on the floor rather than the furniture, just so your guest could sit on the couch. Not only that, but I've heard that she helped to bathe Chantal or bathe her feet or something. So Allah's wife took care of Chantal and, and look at the way she repaid her. Uh, Florida Salt and Sass points says, making fun of how you look in an abaya is not being Islamophobic. That word is not a shield or a silencer not to be criticized, laughed at when you do something stupid or look like a lumpy meat curtain. Oh, oops, hold on. Uh, Florida Salt and Sass also says, what she did about Dee Dee's mom is okay because it was two years ago. And she didn't make fun of her when telling people to harass her mom. And she was drunk and didn't remember it. And Dee Dee and Natter were abusing her. Why are you bringing it up? Yeah, Chantal can bring up her past when she wants. But if we bring it up to make a point, suddenly, like, why are you bringing that up? Nah, nah, nah. Uh, this is a quote from Chantal, her latest live stream. Hitler has followers, ma'am. Yeah, this is this is what she did in one of her past streams. Bye. Bye. <laughs> uh, bye, guys. Thank you. Bye. bye. <laughs> yeah, and she knew what she was doing when she did that. She did the salute. She knew what she was doing. She knew that would provoke people. So she, she did stuff, stuff like this for attention to get the reaction channels talking. And then later on, she wants to cry about it. I'm sorry. You can't do that. Cannot, will not. Uh, Biddy says, Emily, LMAO, she struck Goose Chuck. <laughs> I love Goose Chuck and I just love her. Hey, stupid videos. It triggers the crap out of Chantal. So good. Yeah, I love it too. Goose Chuck, I love you. <laughs> ma'am you and ffg like you, you guys have you 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 wake up in the morning and you sharpen your tongue with a kitchen knife and there's they're so sharp <laughs> you brush your teeth with barbed wire you're hardcore i love it <laughs> all things to do this is a house in budapest romania wow y'all look at this house look at it it's 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 funky it's creepy it's bohemian i love it how unusual is are you i love it i'm not wild about the color but i love the glass work that is that is so amazing you don't see places like that anymore uh interior hunt this is serenity oh lovely Absolutely lovely. Uh, Florida Salt and Sass Point says, claims she minds her own business and doesn't go looking after them after she gets off stream. After just, she just showed that big list of creators she went and reported on the same stream, right? <laughs> she just showed us how she spends her time. And it's not by praying and it's not by improving herself. She literally spends all day reporting us. And by the way, Chantal, I know this is going to irritate you, which is exactly why I'm telling you, listen, it's a known thing that when you report people on YouTube, all right, YouTube, they got things to do, you know, they got lives too. They're not going to spend all day, all night watching an entire video, looking for whatever it is that's offensive. They want timestamps. Okay. Okay. They want to see exactly where the offense happened 
so they can get in and get out and go on to the next one. And if you're reporting the reaction channels and nothing is happening, it's because YouTube is looking at whatever you're sending and saying, we don't see an offense here. What are they talking about? Also, it's also known that if the same person keeps setting the same reports about the same people, after a while, YouTube will ignore you. Because they're like, oh, this person's just on, they're on, they're on one today. So the more you send reports to YouTube, the more they're going to ignore you. <laughs> they see it for what it is. You're you're on one and they're like, yeah, whatever. We got things to do. One more thing, Chantal. Pay attention. Pay close attention. Listen. Listen. YouTube is a company. Right? And the company's all about money. It's, it's not about the English. It's about the math. They like the numbers. They like those big numbers. So let's break it down in simple terms for you. YouTube is a, it's a money-making thing. And do you think YouTube is going to get rid of the reaction channels when the reaction channels are bringing YouTube so much money? You, not so much. You may have bought yourself your way to 100K and gotten that plaque and good for you and... Hope that made you happy, but they're all about the advertising, putting ads on videos, making their money. Maybe that's why they keep looking the other way when it comes to you, because they, they, they see that there's a little bit of money to be made there, so they're not going to get rid of you. But the same could also be said about the reaction channels. To get rid of all the reaction channels, that's a big chunk of change. They're not going to do that. They're not going to cut off their own pocket. What are you, stupid? So you can report all you want. But YouTube is a company and they're going to protect their money. And if you think about all the income that the reaction channels together make YouTube, if you added up all the super chats, all the memberships, all the views, all the ad revenue, that's a huge chunk of change compared to your little teeny tiny channel where you're making nonsense content, you're not pulling in much anymore. You don't have as much pull as you think you do. So yeah, you lose again. Uh, this is from View Prawn, entitled Peace. Oh, that looks so peaceful. <sighs> I wish I were there. Okay, what else we got here? Oh, nature is amazing, a sleeping sea turtle. See, Chantal, you should be like this sea turtle. Look how peaceful this turtle is. You should be like this turtle. Turtle's just chilling. Minding his business. Having good dreams. Why can't you do the same? Another one from View Prawn. What a view. All right. This, there's so much here. Like, so much here. We'll get into that later. Okay, so y'all just saw the pictures of her in 2018. Does this look like the same person, even close? No. No, no you, you gained a lot of weight, Chantal. And, and hey, if you want to, you want to. But you cannot say you're like 350 pounds, ma'am. No way. All these screenshots. So yeah, this happened courtesy of Joe Lee. Like during her her one video, she was basically showing herself praying and and reading out of the Quran. So performative. That should be private time, in my opinion. Uh, seen it all says Harry's tiny little cage, and she wonders why he escapes. How is this even a hamster cage? It is too tiny. That looks like a bird cage. You could take all the stuff out in the middle, put some perches in there, and that would be a cage for, like, say, a budgie. And even then, it would be too small. Now, this is this is one heck of a picture. Eos River, Konitsia, Greece. Look at this picture. 
I don't know if that's photoshopped or natural, but man, that's crazy. The lines, how that perfectly lines up, that's nuts. Uh, oh, things to do, say one word. Well, the word that comes to my mind is stunning. Absolutely stunning. Okay, now this is something that I posted. And this is something that all of you might want to know. Pay attention, Chantal. Because I know you watch my videos. Uh, so Chantal did a live where she talked about her hamster, Harry, getting out. Something you should know, Chantal. All animals, they have a tolerance for cold and for heat. Hamsters are no different. Hamsters cannot tolerate temperatures below 60 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't know what that would be in Celsius. But you being a person of a much bigger size, in order for you to be comfortable and not sweat, you keep having to turn the AC down lower and lower and lower and lower and lower. I remember once you talking about making the place so cold that even Salah couldn't deal. But the bigger you get, the colder the place has to be in order for you to be comfortable so you don't sweat to death. You shouldn't have a hamster in the house because hamsters are tiny and they're small and they get cold easy. If you put a hamster in an environment or in a room that gets below 60 degrees, they can enter a state called torpor, which can be very dangerous for a hamster. That They do that when they get too cold. They can be very dangerous for a hamster to go into torpor. That's why you have to maintain a certain temperature for a hamster because they get too cold, it can literally unalive them. So I don't know what your thermometer is looking like over there, but... I do know that you're always talking about, I'm too hot, I'm too hot, I'm too hot. So you're going to keep turning down that AC. It, it, it your, your hamster keeps, he keeps getting out of the cage and building a nest. Maybe the reason why he's building a nest is because A, the, the cage is too small. B, he's too doggone cold in there. He's trying to find a warm spot in the house. From what I understand, the, the nest was underneath the couch I would think that underneath the couch is warmer than an, than an open cage with no warm area. So, yeah, turn up the AC, Chantal. Uh, uh, when hamsters get too cold, they can go into a state called torpor. This puts them at serious risk of hypothermia, and the result can be fatal. Pay attention, foodie. Maybe that's why he is getting out. Your house is too cold. He's looking for warmth. Uh, making your house Arctic cold is bad for a hamster. They can go into torpor and that can be dangerous for them. 65 to 75 degrees is ideal temp. Anything below that can result in torpor. So yeah, there's a little known fact about hamsters. They can't just tolerate any and all temperatures. They need a little bit of warmth there. Oh, <laughs> and this toad is taking a shower. Look at that. Even a frog could take a shower. He's got the right idea. <laughs> He's like, hey man, why not? Free shower. Uh, this is from Moon Goddess Tarot and Malarkey Meter. A tray full of desserts. Diabetic who? Yeah, uh, sobs again. How could you deal with Chantal? One minute she's making you all kinds of concerned about her. The next minute she's doing this nonsense. She's always keeping you guys worried for her. It's, it's emotionally manipulative. Why do you put up with this? You don't have to. You owe her nothing. And if she's treating you this way, it's a perfect reason to not be there if you don't want to be there. So there's talk that Natter's court case started yesterday. I don't know what happened. But on that note, it makes me wonder if maybe part of the reason why Chantal is irritable and angry is because of Natter. Maybe she's missing Natter and she's worried about Natter and she can't really say it and she's taking it out on people. And here's a beautiful one from Nature is Amazing. 
a white peacock flying in the snow, studding. Oh, boot and vegan. There's always one. <laughs> How precious! I want all of them. Can I? Can I have them all? <laughs> okay, we're all caught up. Goodness, that took a while. Sorry, but there was a lot to go through. So we're going to get into her live now. We might jump around a lot. Who knows? We'll cover part of it. But I'll, I'll give my thoughts. All right. Just making sure that I am where I need to be. Got it? All right. Let's go. 15 seconds. All right. There you go. Perfect. We're ready. Okay. So I want to um, do a bit of reaction to this stream. Before she even says anything, can I say something? You know, Chantal, I think I understand why you're angry at the reaction channels. I think you want to be a reactor. You want to be one so bad. <laughs> I mean, you got all of that pent up frustration and anger and you, you want to let it out. You want to be sarcastic. You want to be mean. You, you want to be a reaction channel. Is that why you rage at us? Because you want to be us and you can't because you're a low cow. I mean, you could react to us, but the thing is you suck at it. You absolutely suck at reacting. You've tried reacting. You suck at it. You don't know how to pick out the finer points, the important points, and discuss them. All you had to know how to do is insult. That's it. You're, you go for the insults, and you go for looking for those gotcha moments. You really don't have anything intelligent to say about the content. But you want to be a reaction channel. You really, really do. That's that's how you get your frustration out. Hence the reason why during this live stream, you're basically calling everybody into the fight. Everybody. You're even going to other channels that aren't even talking about you and involving yourself. But you know what? Let's keep going. Hey, Cynthia. How come I can't? Uh... What the hell? <laughs> and I'm laughing right now because she only had 13 people in her chat and she turned slow mode on immediately. <laughs> so for 13 people, we need slow mode. What? That's just sad. So weird. And stream labs. I guess I'll have to do it this way. Hi, Gabrielle. Oh, so that's what she's using. I was wondering what program it was. Thank you for telling me, Chantal. I'm going to look into that because StreamYard kind of sucks. <laughs> yeah, teardrop, I know. There's not a shortage of them, that's for sure. Okay, so there's not going to be any ranting and raving, okay? It's going to be just addressing. So there we go. Oh, so that's how she's getting around the fact. Oh, hello. Hi. <laughs> Hold on a minute. All right, we got it. We got a kitty cat break, I guess. <gasps> That's how she's gonna get around the fact that it's it's Ramadan and she should be abstaining from getting angry. We're not ranting and raving. We're just addressing. We're gonna give things a different name to make it more acceptable. And make it more right. No. No, Chantal. Hi, baby. Hi, Boggs. It's a baby. Yeah. Sorry, guys. I gotta have a kitty moment. Mm. This is what, what I tell you. She's, she's an old lady. And she's gotta have her mommy time. What are you doing? Hi. Baby. All right. So, like, giving something a different name does not make it more right. It's Ramadan. You should be abstaining away from negative thoughts, negative actions. Chantal, you've been negative ever since Ramadan began. 
and and I'm still looking for the reason, the cause here. What is it? Are you upset because uh, Natter is going to court and you're worried about that? Are you angry at Salah? Are you angry about your lack of views? Are you angry about your lack of money? Are you angry about the fact that you might have to go home soon? What is it? What is the cause here? Are you worried because you're noticing the reactors are not reacting to your content as soon as you go live? That's another thing, y'all. That's another thing. While I'm sitting there watching Chantal, and it was late, I just had the feeling that she was waiting around for someone to go live and uh, restream her because she calls it stream sniping. The correct name for her is restreaming. Stream sniping is for gamers or something like Twitch. But she was waiting, it felt like, for someone to go live and cover her, maybe so she could strike them or something. I don't know. But she was getting mad because nobody really was. That's how bad it is these days. Like, I remember back in the day when as soon as she would go live, everybody would be on Chantal. Now it's like, oh, she's live. Okay, let's wait to see what happens. Oh, she's not doing anything. She's talking about the same crap. Okay, never mind. I mean, it's gotten that bad. <laughs> it's gotten that bad. Hi. Yes. Um, people just don't bother anymore. They don't bother. But the feeling was she was hanging around waiting for some kind of attention and she didn't get it. And the longer it went on and the, the more she had to wait for someone to pay attention to her, the more irritable she got. So she was just pulling out all the stops, calling people out by their names, talking about all kinds of different issues in a desperate attempt to get someone to talk about her. Um, all right, so I want to watch part of the stream where he addresses me, and I want to defend myself and show receipts, okay? Because I'm being accused of being a liar, and I have receipts, so it's quite easy to debunk. They asked for receipts, I'll show them. All right, so let's start by watching this bit of the stream. It's not going to be the whole stream. I know a lot of you can't stand <laughs> when I watch it, so but it's just going to be a little bit. Um, which one is it? Here it is. Okay. So let's watch this. <laughs> if I say that man's name, YouTube will be like, Interact. hey, um, yeah. No, it's not. Yeah, okay. yeah. Take that down. Where is it? I guess he was talking about Natter. Hold on. Yes, Booker. Hold on a second. Let me just turn the heat off real quick because my place is starting to cook. Let's keep going. Oh, yeah. So. Right. And I saw it too. Okay. And I was going to, and I want to talk about this. <clears throat> Here you guys go. And when people are on their channels, hi, Bugs. And she's talking to me. Um, when people are on their channels and they're just reacting to somebody, that's not those people attacking that person. They're just giving their thoughts, feelings, and opinions on the content. That's all it is. But Chantal is, of course, going to frame it as, oh, they're attacking me. They're attacking me. No. No, we're not. We are giving our opinions. You guys can see the chat right now. Look in the chat. Do you see any reaction channels in her chat? No. There never is. Because the reactors, we don't go in her chat and bug her. We leave her alone. We'll let her say whatever it is she wants to say. And then we'll either go in a live or do a recorded video like I'm doing now. And we'll give our take on the whole thing. But she's always claiming that we are attacking her. Really? Then why aren't we in your chat talking to you? Huh, Chantal? Why is that? How is that? That you're claiming we're attacking you, but I don't I don't see any reactors in your chat. I don't see anything. Ugh, I know. Ugh. Yeah, exactly. 
I was going to talk about this today. So just to preface, um, I was listening to another stream. Well, I like to listen to streams when I do chores and, you know, I have to like get out of that habit of listening to these negative things. That was Chantal trying to act like she's got something to do. Well, I like to listen to streams while I do chores. What chores? What have you got to do all day? <laughs> you live alone, Chantal. I live alone. It takes me all of like five or ten minutes to completely clean my place when it gets when it's dirty, which it hardly ever is. But what chores do you do all day? Because they really just do no like I mean, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know if you guys do that. Listen to streams while you're doing mundane things as background noise. I probably should. You know where she probably got that? Because other people have said, I I hey, so and so, I I'll put your stream on while I'm cooking or cleaning or, or doing things. She's got that from other channels. That's something that other people have said they did. Should be listening to something more positive. Right. But whatever, old habits are hard to break sometimes, okay? So, um... That's not an old habit if it's ongoing still. Oh, gosh. So stupid. Thanks, Louise, for the super chat. <laughs> um... So, yeah, um, so I was listening to a stream from Original Owl, and it was about Scamantha or whatever. We'll call her Samantha because, you know, whatever. So, anyway, um, she was saying the most vile. These these two, her and, and Yaba, have been bullying people online. They have a fatty podcast. They're just the most vile people on the internet, okay? And they hit a new low when they were making fun of Gaining Ground's mother with dementia. So she was saying things on her stream like uh, like her, his mother has dementia. So he was calling her and him a pickle brain, mm -hmm. how it's disgusting, like that she, you know, soils herself and he has to clean it. She was just really going very low. And she was saying... You know what I don't like about you, Chantal? You try to pull in everybody into your fight. And in a sneaky, shady way, you try to bring drama into your story. You try to get, re you, what you're trying to do is you're trying to get reactors to talk about each other and fight with each other by bringing it into your story. I don't like that. I'm here to talk about you. You, okay? Just you. But you think that by talking about other things on your channel that you're hoping you're fishing to see if somebody's got something negative to say about another reactor and then that, that, that person and that person will start fighting. You're trying to start wars. I see what you're doing. I don't like it. I'm here to talk about you. Okay? Just you. Her reasoning for doing this, this is where my comment is coming up. The reason for doing this is the fact that she, um, that apparently gaining ground, she says, came for her kids and talked about her kids. Number one, number one, Samantha herself is the one who's bragged about her kids working in a brothel. Okay. She's the one who brought that tea on the internet. Nobody else has talked about her kids or brought up her kids more than Samantha herself. All right, yo mama. So when you're accusing me of going low and bringing up her kids, get it right. Number two, her kids are not kids. They're adults. So if you I'm going to say this about that. It, first of all, the, the Yaba Sam GG beef, not my deal. I don't know anything about that. I just stay out of that. Not informed about that. But I will say this, Chantal. This is one thing. A person's child is a person's child, no matter how old they are. Do you understand that? Maybe you don't understand that because you're not a parent. But if you're a parent to a child, that child is your child, no matter what their age. Whether they're five years old or 50 years old, they are still your child and you still love them. Do you get that? Your child, is, you're always going to look at them as being your child. 
teach them being young or old or still your kid. You reach a certain point of maturity and you're and you were brought up on the internet. Yeah, we have a right to discuss that. Okay. It's not like her kids are little toddlers walking around. All right. These are adult children that she brought up herself. All right. So get that right as well before you come for me and call me disgusting and going low. Number three, after what I heard, it was very hard for me not to be reactive. And what do you mean it was, it was very hard? It's not hard at all. Just if it's not your business, it's not your business. Shut up. Okay, turn your face and your ears away. It's not your business. Why are you involving yourself? You're involving yourself for a reason. And the reason is because you need something to talk about. You need something for content. That's why you're trying to whistle everybody into your fight. You want people to fight with you. You need attention. You need views. You are desperate, Chantal. That you're willing to go all over the internet and find anybody, everybody to fight with. You should be talking about other people's kids. Period. What they got to do with anything? How are they involved? They're not. But you're making them a topic of conversation. I don't care if... if uh, Sam's kids are involved in the adult industry in some way. I'm no one to judge. That's their choice. But you're trying to make it into a kind of a gotcha moment, like a shame moment. At the same time, Chantal, you've sold every bit of your soul. You did you sold your soul a long time ago. You're trying to use the word prostitute like some kind of put down. Ma'am. What do you do on YouTube? You've sold everybody your health for a little bit of money. You turned yourself into a living caricature of a character for the sake of YouTube views and attention. So if the word prostitute is going to be used in a derogatory term, ma'am, what are you on YouTube? You sold yourself out. And you keep selling yourself. So, yeah, I wouldn't be talking about prostitution if I were you. I really wouldn't. You sold your body and your soul, mama. There's nothing left. That's why you're bankrupt. On every level of yourself, you are bankrupt. You got nothing left to sell. Lash out and have an opinion on it. So, yeah, maybe it makes it worse. But you don't realize that I don't care what these two say. They reveal themselves to be low themselves. I don't care. They can continue to talk about me all they want, whatever. I don't come on here crying. I just come and say, oh, no, they're talking about me. My feelings are hurt. No, you'll never catch me doing that. I point out the hypocrisy just like you. That's all I do. You want to be a reaction channel so bad. So bad. And you're so mad that you don't have the intelligence, the creativity, the wit the humor being fast on your feet with those comments to be a reactor. You suck at it. You want to be it, but you, you're not good enough for it. <laughs> well, you got to get good to react. You got to do your homework. You got to do your research. You got to bring up them clips. You got to have the archives. You got to come to class prepared. You're too lazy to be a reactor, Chantal. I do when I, I when I defend myself that's all I do I point out the hypocrisy I don't care if they continue to talk about me I'm not going to silence myself when I have something to say you I don't care if they talk about me says the person who sits there and reports channels all day long I don't care if they talk about me but yet I'm going to report them if they talk about me make it make sense y'all she doesn't care but yet she's going to report you if you mention her name I wouldn't be doing that if I was you Chantal you want to know why Look at your buddy, Natter. Look what happened to his channel. He got Mr. E got report happy, strike happy. And nobody's going to talk about him. And his channel has suffered. He shot himself in the foot with that one. You want to go down that same route? Because honestly, there's, there's very few people that react to you anymore. You're not the hot topic of the week as you used to be. You're not the flavor of the week. Your flavor has gotten rather boring and stale. Hence why everybody's not on the ball when it comes to you getting online. They're like, what's she doing? Oh, I'll wait. I'll see what's going on. <laughs> you know what you're saying? 
<laughs> it used to be where nobody waited. Everybody rushed to the table quickly. Now everybody holds back. They're like, what's she doing? I'm just going to wait. I'm going to wait to see what she's doing before I do it. <laughs> That's how boring you are. Are you really going to go after the little bit of people that still talk about you? Are you really going to be that stupid? You know, you don't know how you would react if you had all these channels coming for you and bullying and harassing you every day for years. Okay. Thank you. All right. So let's get to this. So I left a talking about someone and commenting is not bullying, Chantal. Look at your chat. Look right here. Look, look. Y'all can see the chat right here. Look at it. Uh, look at the <laughs> look at the fact this chat is not moving. It's not moving. There's so few people. No reaction channels up in there. None. We're not bothering her. She's so stupid. Comment in Original Owl's channel. Um, yeah, so basically when I said prostitute daughter, I wasn't shaming her daughter for being a prostitute. But that, that just sounded like it did. That comment right there sounded like you were shaming her. That's not what I was doing. Uh, yeah, you you were. You know, Chantal, you, you got to pick a lane. You can't say something in a certain tone and say, well, I'm not saying it that way. Oh, yeah, you are. Yeah, you are. And what a hypocrite you are. The, the hypocrisy of you. If you are shaming somebody who's done something of an adult nature, you, ma'am, who had an OnlyFans, you doing pictures for OnlyFans, you posing naked in a bathtub full of peats, you who, when you were younger, you were giving it up for, for almost nearly free, you know, trading, trading sexual acts for a cheeseburger. <laughs> yeah, you did. I mean, can you really talk about anybody doing anything of an adult nature? No. I was saying that because Sam was comparing. She, she was excusing her behavior towards making fun of a woman with dementia and soiling herself because Gigi was mentioning that her children were prostitutes. So I was saying it's not the same. Making fun of an elderly person versus... And here, Susan says, it is not fair because her children are not on YouTube. True. If you, if you're, you've got, you've got a problem with somebody, you keep it on them. Just them. All right. Like kids, we, the unspoken rule of YouTube, leave kids out of it. Kids are not involved. Period. If, if somebody is not involved and don't involve them. Leave the family alone, leave the friends alone, leave the kids alone if they're not directly involved, if they don't involve themselves. What do the kids got to do with it? What? They're not on YouTube speaking their mind. They're not doing react videos to Chantal. Why bring them into the argument? Because if they're easy targets, because they're not around to defend themselves. Is that why she keeps mentioning her grandmother? Because her grandmother's not around to defend herself or speak her mind. <laughs> Why bring the kids into it? Whether they're grown or not is a moot point. They're not involved in the fight, so don't involve them. You know, you're just, if you got a problem with somebody, you keep it on that person. It's, it's a back and forth between the two of you. You don't spread the circle wider. And so oh, I'm going to talk about your friends. I'm going to talk about your family. That you're, I'm going to talk about your kids. No. No, that's cowardly. That is cowardly to do that. Sis, your prostitute adult daughters is not the same. Exactly. That's all I was saying. All right. So let's get to the reaction. Because I saw this in Al stream also. Okay. Al stream last night talking about the disgusting things that Sam was saying about G and again, I'm not involved in the drama that's being talked about right now. I don't know what's going on. I'm not keeping up with it, 
but it just feels like Chantal is doing this on purpose and airing this part of his stream, meaning your mama, to kind of get people talking about things away from her as a way to get maybe the reactors fighting with each other. And I don't like all that shady business that she's trying to do. I don't approve of it. Gigi's mother, who is got dementia and Sam wanted to call her pickle brain shit on herself and all kind of disgusting things that she was saying about Gigi's mother was just utterly nasty. And exactly. Sam huh, deleted the video, said that she accidentally deleted it. <laughs> okay. Oh. And honestly, no, I, you know what? Maybe I shouldn't um, be so reactive and I'm working on that, but it's hard sometimes. And you know what? I was defending gaining ground because he's always been a light. He reacted to me in the past. My problem is not reacting to me. Like he was always lighthearted about it. And he's always been nice to me and he doesn't deserve that kind of um, mental abuse. And it's a pattern of behavior for these two, Gabba and Sam. And I was really just like fed up with it. And what I heard, it was disgusting. Okie dokie. You know, I'm, but <clears throat> hold on a second. Hold on. Something that I'd like to say before I forget. You know what I noticed about Chantal going after reaction channels? This is just an observation, y'all. And I noticed this a while ago. You know, there are tons of reaction channels. There are tons of archive channels. So why is it that Chantal only goes after, say, a handful of them? And what are the, the factors that she looks for when she goes after somebody? I think I know two of them at least. I think that one thing that she looks for is the size of a channel. You know, because there are, as far as the reaction channel pond, there are the big fish and there are little fish. You know, there's lots of smaller channels and then there's a few bigger channels. And I think Chantal, because sometimes she gets people that sub up to her channel uh, based on negative attention, she likes to go for the big fish. She likes to target the big fish, uh, the bigger channels. Uh, the bigger the number, the more she's got her eyeball on them. So the bigger you are, the more she's looking at you. Although she does look at the smaller channels and sometimes she will target the smaller channels just because they are smaller. Uh, in the past, she has said that she goes after the smaller channels because, excuse me, because she feels because they're small they can't defend themselves, that they're going to get uh, panicked and they won't fight back. Although she found out the hard way through Mrs. Fields that, yeah, a smaller channel will fight back and give you a run for your money. But I feel when she goes after people, when she talks about people, it has to do with the size of the channel and how many subs they have and how many viewers they have. Also... And here's another thing. I think she also takes into account, does that channel go live a lot and react to her? If you go live a lot and you react to her, that gets you on her radar. Like she takes, a, she, she takes great offense to that. You don't even have to be stream sniping her or restreaming her. But if you go live a lot, do a lot of lives, that puts you on her hit list. So that, I just want to put that out there. I think that if, as far as targeting reaction channels, like there are different things that really get her attention. Uh, the number of people you have subbed to your channel, the number of people that are watching your stream, how often you go live and talk about her. Uh, and if your channel starts to grow a lot, if you're smaller, that really gets her attention. And that also puts you on her hit list. Al was reporting on it, and Foodie Beauty joined the chat. Susan, her children are not children, Susan. And yes, they were on YouTube. She brought them on YouTube. She talked about them. So you guys want Yeah, but she didn't show them, idiot. She's the parent. She's the mother. A mother is free to talk about her kids. You aren't the mother. You don't have the right. 
She's not showing her child or children on her channel, not showing their pictures. They're not coming on and, and saying whatever it is about Chantal. So Chantal doesn't have the right to comment. You hear that, Chantal? You don't have the right. Come for me and say, we're allowed to come for your pets because you bring them on YouTube. Well, guess what, Susan? We're allowed to talk about what she talks about. No, not in the same ballpark. You cannot compare pets and human children, even though pets, in a way, like they're, they're furry kids. I acknowledge that. And they are very dear to us and we love them very much. But Chantal, as far as your pets go, you, I'm going to say it, you pimped out your pets, all of them. Even now you continue to pimp out your pets. You bring them onto YouTube to get attention, uh, to connect with people in your audience as deflection. When people start asking the hard questions, you pimp out your own pets as much as yourself. You got Julia and you got Harry for the purpose of pimping them out, using them for attention, using them for money. You even talked about doing a, a 24 seven thing with Harry, hamster cam. And I guess you found out that that takes a lot of work, but your sole purpose to get Harry was to make money off of him. You want to pimp out a freaking hamster. And the only reason why you got Julia is because she looks like BBJ. You want to go at people using a cat. You're horrible. Out on YouTube as well. And she herself said that her adult, adult, they're not children, okay? Adult daughter worked in a brothel and she bragged about it. Adult, okay? Not children. And she said this, she said, making fun of an elderly person versus your prostitute adult, exactly. adult daughter is not the same. Yep. It's not. What's your point? Foodie beauty. When are you going to stop? Never, never. She's never going to stop. There is a simple, quick answer. Never, never. She needs drama. She needs drama to give herself views. She needs the drama to blow off steam because she's so full of self-loathing and self-hate and self-frustration. It's not even funny. And she doesn't dare go to Salah and vent on him. She does it to people on the internet because there's no repercussions for her actions. You know, if Salah is an actual person. People on the internet, she doesn't acknowledge them as being real people. So she can say what she wants. And she doesn't have to face the people that she's talking to. Stop what? Defending myself? That's a real honest question. See, you're not helping. Helping what? You know, when everyone talks about making this space a better place, right? And then when people talk about how they pal on you and they talk shit about you. And then when people... They're never going to stop. That's when you don't get it. I'm allowed to have my opinion on something. What? Why should I silence myself just because... Um, I'm a, like, what? I'm not afraid of them to talk about me. Keep going. I don't care. Say, hey, <laughs> keep going. I don't care. But then she reports everybody. Chantal, you are, you would talk about everybody else being bullies. Okay. You're the one over here. If, if somebody criticizes you, you go after them. It doesn't matter how they do it. If they're polite about it or not, if they're blunt or not, you still go after them. You know, you got problems with milk tea and pulpy. And they're so incredibly, they're so incredibly polite. And you talk trash about them. So it doesn't matter if somebody is blunt and upfront and straightforward or they're, or they're really polite about it. You don't like criticism. You don't want to hear it. You spend your entire day reporting people. Although the fact that you are spending all day reporting people and you sit there and you send report after report after report and nothing is happening, that by itself should tell those on Chantal's channel, whatever it is that's going on with the reactors, we are not 
breaking terms of service because if we were, our channels would be disappearing. You understand how that works? If we were breaking terms of service, our channels would be terminated or at the very least, we would be getting strikes on our channels. And for anyone who wants to know the strike system, your first violation, you are out for a week. You can't do community posts. You can't post any videos, nothing. You're out for a week. Your second offense, you're out for two weeks. Your third offense, your channel's terminated. It's a done deal. You can't get three strikes within 90 days. If you get one strike or two strikes within 90 days, and then after that 90 day period, those strikes fall off and you start all over again. But if you get three strikes within, within, three, within three months, your channel's done. So she's over there spending, sending report after report after report. Our channels are fine. We're following terms of service. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, she's breaking terms of service. Because the policy says you cannot glorify doing content if you have an eating uh, problem. She shouldn't be doing any kind of eating content. She's breaking terms of service every time she does a mukbang. And the sub for sub thing, that's another one. So she's over there breaking rules. And she's got a problem with those of us that were within the rules. Hmm. You know, you don't need to pal. Why you guys talk so much shit about this person so much? And then you turn around and talk about somebody's child being a prostitute. And you think it's helping in some sort of way when it's utterly disgusting. You're the problem. You go around and you talk about... Listen. Oh, yeah, I'm the problem because I pop up once in a chat, once or twice, and give my opinion on something and defend somebody and have a stance on something. Okay, but everyone else can talk all day long in this community. Don't act like... Uh... You know what, Chantal, like I wasn't there a part of that chat. Like I said, I stay out of the fights of different people. If it doesn't involve me, it doesn't involve me. But you knew what you were doing going in there. You are desperate to fight with anybody to get eyes on your channel. Lately, you've been pulling that nonsense of clickbaity titles to get people to watch. And you have confessed years ago that if you want to pe get people to watch you, you will use clickbaity titles. You even did like a little helpful tips for YouTube video. And I showed it on my channel. You even said out of your own mouth that it takes something small and lie about it, embellish it, make it seem like a more than what it was in order to get more attention. So you probably went on to that channel and you did not use a sock account. You could have used a sock account. You wanted everybody to know that it was you. So you used your real handle, which you rarely do. Funny how you went over to that chat with the everyday Miriam handle. But yet when you go into other people's chat rooms, the reaction channel chat rooms, you'll use sock accounts. When you post on their comment sections, you'll use the sock accounts. But you went in there with the everyday Miriam handle. You knew what you were doing. You wanted people to know it was you. So they will come back over to your channel and give you some views. Calculated. Manipulative. Uh, like, including you. Including you. Like, what? We already know Sam and Yaba is disgusting. We already know that. I can talk about Sam and Yaba. I can drag Sam and Yaba, and I don't even need to use their children. I don't need... They're not children, sir. They're adults. <sighs> I'm going to say it one more time. When you are a parent... Your children are your children. Whether they are young or old, they are still your children. If you were a parent, Chantal, you would know that. Hell, you as a pet parent should feel that way. 
because even our pets, you can have them for a year or 20 years, however long your pet lives for. They are still your child. My cat Booger, she is 11 years old, 12 years old. She's an old girl, but she's still my baby. Even though technically she's about the same age as me. <laughs> Probably older. <laughs> she don't act like it, though. Still acts like a kitten. Booger. Hey, baby. But, you know, your child is your child. No matter what the age. You understand? It's still your child. They're adults. And you have brought up, yep, some, I think it was Yabba. You have brought up their parenting. I think it was, no, it was um, Breezy. So don't, don't even go there. To point out a prostitute and this and that. What does her kids got to do with her disgusting actions? Her kids. Because her adult, it's not kids. Her adult daughter, she was brought up online again by her own mother. Yeah. Well, just because the mother brings her up doesn't mean you can. Unless that adult daughter, in my opinion, is online, on camera, doing the live, talking about you, Chantal. You ain't got no reason to talk about her. Period. There were story times about this. Go look it up. Ain't coming online, disrespecting you or disrespecting what Gigi or anybody. Reach. What a dumb reach to come for me for this. Anyway. So the fact that you want to go into somebody's stream. I think he just looks for things periodically. See? I'm not a foodie beauty stan. I call her out on her BS. But what you call me out on is BS. It's so ridiculous. And you know what, Chantal, but this, look at the what you're doing, though. You go places and you look for things to latch on to, to fight about, to make any topics for your live streams. You're, you're, you went into a chat, it seems like, to go fight with somebody. You were looking for a fight. You were looking to pick a fight. You wanted to involve as many people as possible. And to do that, you're going to go after whoever you got to go after to, to accomplish that goal. Going after somebody's kids, even though they are not on camera, they're not making videos about you. You're involving them. And you're doing it because you're a coward. Because if they're not on camera talking about you, then that means they're not online to defend themselves. So you're going after people that they're not part of YouTube. So you can say whatever you want. They are not there to speak back at you. Coward. And talk about their kids being prostitutes. Why would you do that? And, and she knows, she has to know. that it, I, I know she does this on purpose. That by talking about somebody's kids, I mean, that when it comes to a person's children, whether you're a mother or a father, yes or no, when you're a mom or a dad or, or both, uh, like a couple, you will go to the ground to defend your kids. Ch the, the subject of a person's children, it's always a sensitive topic. That will get anybody's hackles up in a hurry. So I think she purposely goes after the subject of somebody's kids in an, a low blow effort to get that person to fight with them. Because any parent would immediately get angry and defend their kids. Because she did. She just in this stream, you didn't listen. In this stream, she was saying she was coming for Gigi because Gigi talked about her kids being prostitutes. So I was comparing that that's not the same as making fun of a helpless elderly person with dementia. Being a prostitute, those are willful actions of her adult daughter. It's not the same. This elderly person who has dementia didn't choose that. And she's picking on someone weak and innocent like that. Obviously, it hit a nerve with her, okay? Because, like, honestly, like, you totally took it way out of context, just like every other reaction channel why would you why would you give them and i would like to add this in real quick you know foodies caring seems to be selective doesn't it her caring about an elderly person very selective 
where was all this care for an elderly person when her grandmother was dying in a hospice? What was that care then? When her grandmother was in the hospice alone, she couldn't be bothered to care for grandma. She was too busy running after Natter, chasing after Natter, making sure he wasn't talking to other women. She showed up once to the hospice to take a picture with grandma and then she was out the door. When her grandmother died, she went to the funeral dressed very scantily. And then after the funeral, she didn't even go to her grandmother's house to comfort her mother and say, hey, mom, is there anything I could do for you? Can I wash some dishes for you? Can I cook for you? Can I clean for you? Just spend time with mom who had just lost her mom. Couldn't be bothered. To care for a sick elderly person in her own family. Also, the same person who, because she was angry at Natter and Dee Dee, doxed Dee Dee's mom, who was elderly also. Where was the care then for the elderly? She's very selective about her care and her concern when she wants something out of it. When she wants to fight with somebody and she's looking to pick a fight, then suddenly she cares. She is a true narcissist. Narcissists do not express care or show care unless there's something in it for them. So what is the reward that she was looking for? Extra views, extra attention, uh, bigger channels fighting with her? Yeah, she was looking for all of that. Narcissists are so lacking in real empathy and care. They literally have to fake it. They have to conjure it up. They have to manufacture it. And because it's so out of their norm, it's something so special for them to do that, that when they do express something that looks like care, they want a reward. Oh, I showed you that I cared. So pay me. So there, there, was a, there was a reason she did all this. Jumping into somebody else's stream, getting involved into a fight that was none of her business. She's desperate, she's lonely, and she's angry. Sam a reason to come back today, because that's what you did. You gave Sam a reason to go, hey, see? See what I'm talking about? I, uh, yeah, I'm talking about a Durant. I'm talking about an elderly woman that's shitting on herself, that pickle brain. But look at what they're saying about my child. It's not a child. It's an adult. You know what? I figured Foodie out. Y'all follow me for a minute. because, Like I said, I knew someone like her. He wasn't super morbidly obese, but personality wise, narcissistic wise, he was an insecure egomaniac. And we were involved for five, six years. I've known a Foodie in my life who is just as toxic and horrible as she is. And let me tell you something. Something y'all should know about somebody like Foodie. From experience, I can speak. What she's doing, what my ex did, is what they will do is they will say or do something wrong. And even if somebody calls them out on their wrong, they won't admit they're wrong. They will sit there and keep Driving the point, driving the point, driving the point, doubling down, tripling down, quadrupling down, but they will never admit they're wrong because what they're trying to do is wear you down to where you finally just surrender and go, whatever, you know, but they will never admit they're wrong. That's one of their man manipulation tactics is wearing you down to where they will never have to admit that they are in the wrong. They will simply wear you down until you're so tired of arguing about the same point that you just give up. And that's what she's doing right now. She's not going to admit that she's wrong. She's not going to admit that she's saying something wrong or it was wrong for her to jump into something that was none of her business. She's going to just gonna keep 
pushing, pushing, pushing until everybody says, you know what? I'm tired of talking about this. Yeah. I, I've known a foodie in my life. This is what they do. Yeah. An adult being a prostitute is not the same. There's nothing more. You, one thing is about morals. But the other thing is about an illness that they can't help. Don't you see the comparison? <laughs> and I'm not even coming for her for being a quote unquote prostitute. I don't give a, I don't care. But I'm saying it's not the same thing. And her kids if, are not. If you didn't care, then why'd you word it the way you worded it? This is what you said. You said making fun of an elderly person versus your prostitute adult daughters. You made sure to include that word prostitute. You could have said adult daughters who work in the adult industry. That would have been better worded instead of prostitute. You're using the word prostitute as a put down English major. Words matter. Not children. They are a grown adults, which makes it fair game, in my opinion, because she brought them on the Internet. So she didn't show her kids. Chantal, just shut up. You're you're losing this. Listen, you're losing. You've lost the argument. Just be quiet. Shh. Don't talk. Don't talk. We have a right to react to that. Isn't that so? And I don't care. They're always going to find something else to talk about. It doesn't matter. Now she has something to talk about. Whatever. This comment I made is nothing in comparison to what she said about Gigi's mother. So it's not the same whatsoever. You don't. You're not helping. <clears throat> you're hurting. Dale Orth, why are you here then listening to it? If it's such a bother for you and it's, you know, you want to come in here and virtue signal, don't watch it. Right. You're giving them a reason to do what they're doing. No, 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 and no. And then no. No, you're no, no. giving people. You're going to blame me for them reacting that way and coming up with vile stuff? What? I don't think so. This has nothing to do with me. I'm allowed to leave a comment. How they react and how they act is on them, not me. They should just because I leave a comment like this. No, they don't. It doesn't mean to give them a right to go back and be nasty again. No, that's on them. Reason to talk shit about you because I don't care if they talk crap about me. I don't care. The only thing I talk about when I rage, whatever you want to call it, when I react and defend my. I want to address this person's comment. Keena Bear says, Hey man, there are reaction channels out there that I like. They make me laugh at times, yo mama included, and his soundtracks are fire, but. So many channels cast on Chantal daily for years. You know what, Kina? We would have less to talk about with Chantal if she stopped lying. She lies so much, even about things she doesn't have to lie about. The one thing she will not do is tell the truth. She lies about things she doesn't have to lie about, and she gets caught constantly in her lies. She doesn't have to share her entire personal life with us if she doesn't want to. But there's a reason why the reaction channels talk about her. And it's not about her weight. There are other people on YouTube that are super morbidly obese, like Chantal. Notice the reactors don't talk about them like Hungry Fat Chick, Candy. Do you notice that we don't talk about Candy? We don't go after Candy. You want to know why? Because Candy, she's, she's truthful about who she is. She comes on camera. She says, I'm a hungry fat chick and I'm doing mukbangs and that's it and that's all. And we're like, okay, Chantal's problematic. She's always been problematic. That's why we talk about her. We talk about her because of her lies. If she stopped lying and stopped being problematic, we'd have less to talk about. But she just... Hey, she wants to make problematic content. Yes, we're going to remark on it. Myself, it's about pointing out hypocrisies and lies. That's it. I, my feelings are not hurt. Trust me. Look at how you talk. That's disgusting. Talking about somebody's child being a prostitute. What? Thank you. She, she talked about it herself. So go take your virtual signaling and you know what you can do with it. Ugh. You couldn't have just it's left so it at weird. Sometimes you're like on game and I like what he says is makes sense. But sometimes it's just so far out. Like, no, As making fun of an elderly person is bad. You couldn't leave it like that. You yeah, can I can say what I want. Everyone else, you know, anyway, I feel like that. No one's opinion is wrong. Some things are facts, Henry.
Sam is the one who came online and talked about her daughter working in a brothel. It's not kids. She's an adult. And if her mother brought her on the internet to talk about it. Okay. You know what? I'm just tired of this argument. Are, can we get move forward a little bit? Cause this is like a long stream. My plaque on the way. When they went at lit, when they went after little mama, the way they did for no apparent. Okay. He was making up lies and once or twice or a few times, I come out and I address it tough to then stay mad. Y'all noticing that <laughs> notice the chat is not moving. I told you guys there's like 13 people in her chat this night and she was raging for hours. She was literally waiting for anyone who was a reaction channel to go live and cover her. I promise you that she went live late on purpose. She thought somebody was going to be up. And she was so angry that nobody went live at that moment to cover her. And maybe she could uh, report them to YouTube. She was so mad. Everybody was like, I'll wait. I'll wait and I'll, <laughs> and I'll like record it just in case. I'll deal with it tomorrow. I don't care. And all that stuff like that. But I didn't harp on that. I harped on Sam's actions. Because... Oh, I'm see, not going see, out. He has to ch see. He's using this. He's using this as an example as how he's better than all the other reactors because he's going for my actions. He's calling me out. He's he's hitting the hammer. He's going after my actions. Please get away. Get off your high horse. Her foodie beauty for what she's wearing and who she's praying to. I'm going on her behavior. I'm going on my behavior for defending somebody, defending somebody who whose mother was attacked. Okay. Do y'all see what I'm talking about? What I said earlier about a narcissist, an insecure egomaniac like Chantal, like they they will double down, triple down, quadruple down. They will basically their their manipulation tactic to win an argument is to to wear you down to the point where they're talking in circles, talking in circles, talking in circles until you get so doggone tired you're like, "Okay, yeah, whatever, you win." And even though they're still wrong, it doesn't matter. They won the argument by wearing you down. That's what she's doing right now. She's not going to admit that she's wrong. She's not going to back down. She's going to double down, triple down, quadruple down, wearing the other person down just so she'll win the argument. And in her head, that equals her being completely right. Okay, sure. The very thing that all these reaction channels say that they attack Foodie Beauty on her behavior. That yeah, we've been saying that all along. You're late to the table. That's what I'm going at. No, you're doing exactly what they do. You're going after something stupid and petty, and you're taking it out of context, like they do, to make me look like a villain. Oh, oh you mean like what you do, Chantal? <laughs> How much did you harp on French fry girl and eating pineapple? <laughs> you know, it's so ridiculous. So stupid. How how much did she talk about French fried girl eating pineapple? She went on and on and on and on about the eating of the pineapple. It's a pineapple gate. <laughs> Where did I make fun of her daughter for being a prostitute? Where? I said elderly woman with dementia versus. Okay, I'm tired of hearing about this. Let's move it along. And hate, it's it's allowed to be reported, Okay. You're not me. You're not in my shoes. You don't have thousands. You don't have thousands of videos made about you attacking you. And how would she know that? How would she know that there's thousands of videos being made about her unless she was searching her name? Miss, I don't care about the reaction channels. I don't pay attention. But she's saying there's thousands of videos. Girl, how long do you spend on YouTube researching your name? How long do you spend on Twitter? You're talk you're over there talking about doing chores. When do you have time? Your religion, your weight every single day, your family. So in my opinion, if I want to strike channels for bullying and harassment, I have a right. But they're not bullying and harassing you. They're not in your comment section. They're not even in your live chat. So where's the bullying coming from? I'm sorry, Chantal. I go into the live chats of the reactors. I, I'll sit there, I'll hang out with Are You Serious, uh, with Cowboy Dog, with Eerie Pepperoni, uh, Goose Chuck, like uh, House of Hannibal. 
I go into several. And let me tell you something. I have not seen an instance at all anywhere in those live chats with the content creators telling their audience to come to your channel and bother you. Not one time has that happened. None of those content creators I just named, or any of them for that matter, have used their chat to say, hey, subscribers or watchers, go over to Everyday Miriam and bother her. Go into her next live chat and bug her. Or get into her comment section and bug her. They don't weaponize their audiences, but you do. You've done that many times. That little signaling to your beezers to go after different channels. You weaponize your audience, but the reactors don't. So where is the bullying? Somebody expressing their thoughts, feelings, and opinions on their channel is not bullying, ma'am, because they're not in your face. They're not on your live chat. They're not bugging you. You are simply trying to call it bullying because you're trying to paint yourself the victim. You're not the victim. If you are literally going out of your way to bother people, to poke at people, you're, you're going into other people's chats and just not minding your business. You're looking for people to fight with you. Who's the bully at that point? You're literally walking up to people and kicking sand on their shoes. And then you have the nerve to run away and cry and say, they're picking on me. No. No, no, they're not bullying you if you're the one starting the fight. You're making a point to start the fight. Try to do that. All right. So you can think what you want about that. Oh, it's wrong. It's wrong. So you're basically condoning the very thing that you're talking about. What are you even talking about? This is not a business. I'm a human being and you don't know how it affects my health, my mental health. You don't know how it affects me. Okay. Like it doesn't really, like, like I said, it doesn't hurt my feelings, but I'm just saying, you don't know that. You don't know how I feel, truly feel inside. You don't know why I strike these people. You know, like I, to me in principle alone, I don't feel that YouTube should platform hate. I don't think that they should. I th well, then your channel would be gone in a heartbeat if that were true. But you've made some very hateful content, Chantal. I think it's ridiculous the amount of hate that they allow slide, you know? Ma'am, I think it's ridiculous that they've made policies against people glorifying issues with food and addiction, and yet they allow you to have your channel when you've made tons of videos talking about your issue with food and yet you continue to do mukbangs. Why are they allowing you to have your channel when clearly you're breaking the rules? The content that you do, it's self-harm content. You're hurting yourself and by putting it on a public platform, you are potentially triggering and affecting and hurting other people. Why is YouTube allowing that? I. It's got to be over money. It's got to be. It's got to be. Do you know someone at YouTube? I, I, I'm wondering. Why do they make these rules and then they don't enforce them? It makes me honestly wonder if the terms of service, it's just words on a piece of paper to make the advertisers more comfortable with advertising their products and services on YouTube. Just something they can put in front of the advertisers and the company saying, yeah, we got policies. Here they are. It's family friendly. When all truth, it really isn't family friendly. But they need something to make the companies feel safe. So why are they letting you have a platform then? All of the, the disgusting things that go on. I'm sorry, but it's my prerogative. Sorry, but not sorry. I don't believe you strike anybody. Oh, okay. So you're being I, just like the reaction channels now. You have no proof of this whatsoever. You come for the other reaction channel saying they're just making claims out of their butt. They have no proof for that. Where's your proof that I don't? Where's your proof that I don't? I believe you leave it up there. And I don't, mm -hmm. I don't, me personally. Yeah, because I love it. I love people harassing me and coming real life and, and talking about me and take. Who's going real life with foodie? <laughs> what is she talking about? She is in Kuwait. I, I, 
ain't nobody going flying to Kuwait to bother her. What does she mean? He views from me and wait, what? Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Stop. Let's go back. Why I strike these people, you know, like I to me, in principle alone, I don't feel that YouTube should platform hate. I don't think you know what? <laughs> That's all I got to say to you, Chantal. I think that they should. I think it's ridiculous the amount of hate that they allow slide. You know, all of the, the disgusting things that go on. I'm sorry, but it's my prerogative. Sorry, but not sorry. I don't believe you strike anybody. Oh, okay. So you're being I just like the reaction channels now. You have no proof of this whatsoever. You come for the other reaction channel saying they're just making claims out of their butt. They have no proof for that. Where's your proof that I don't? Where's your proof that I don't? I believe you leave it up there. And I don't, mm -hmm. I don't, me personally. Yeah, because I love it. I love people harassing me and coming real life and, and talking about me and taking views from me. And we're taking views from her. Chantal, even if there were no reaction channels whatsoever, the people that are on the reaction channel side would not watch you. You don't seem to understand that. If a person has a, a choice between watching you on your channel and watching you on a reaction channel channel, they're sending a message. And the message is very simple. They're saying, I don't like the person, but I'm interested in the story. And because I don't like the person, I am not going to support the person. I'm not going to put money in their pocket through Google AdSense. I am not going to send them super chats. I'm not going to buy a membership, but I'm interested in the story. So I'll let somebody else tell me the story. It's more entertaining that way. I want to support who I want to support with a view or a super chat or a super sticker or a membership, but I do not support this person over here. So even if there were no reaction channels, those people that are on the reaction channel side, they probably wouldn't want you. Okay, your your content is not strong enough on its own for people to watch you full strength. You don't help yourself by making boring content. You would have been at 100K ages ago had you done quality content, but you've been slacking, slacking for the longest. And you wonder why people are not invested anymore if a person doesn't like you they don't like you and getting rid of the entire reaction community is not going to make them like you or watch you your story has gotten so incredibly boring that a lot of the reactors they're reacting to different people now they're including different people they they, they got to go where the, the content is and you're not helping yourself you know, I remember back in the day when you were doing well. This was before Natter, before Salah. You were doing well. You understood the system. You understood the symbiotic relationship between the reaction channels and yourself. You do the content. We react to you. Yeah, we're going to get some subs out of it. Maybe. We're going to get some views out of it. Maybe. But on the back side of that, you can't talk about anybody on the internet without giving that person attention. That's just how it works. So the more reaction channels and archive channels talked about you, the greater your chances of people finding out about you and maybe joining up on your channel and becoming a member or are you getting money? You understood how it worked and you were fine with it. It wasn't until your money started to go down that you had a problem with it. And you started blaming the lack of money on the reaction channels, even though it wasn't our fault. It was the fact that your content just started to really suck, which is not our fault. And it's not our fault that we can take your content and we can do stuff with it and make it more entertaining. We put the work in. So yeah, the people are going to come over to our side and they're going to watch. And you... Instead of getting angry at the lead dog in the pack, you know, snapping at their backside and saying, I don't like the fact that you're, you're doing better than me. Instead of being envious, 
the smarter thing to do would be to look at the lead dog and respect and say, hey, you're in the lead. You're at the front of the pack. I admire you. I'm going to watch you. I'm going to see what you do. I'm going to take some notes. I'm going to do some homework and apply them so that maybe I can be in the lead someday. You're not willing to do that. You're not willing to put the work in. You're not willing to do the hard work. Therefore, you will not get the reward. Harassing me and bullying me. I love it, yo mama. I believe you shouldn't strike anybody. Right? right? Oh, right. I think okay. it's say Yeah, because you're selfish because you want the content. If they got taken down, what would you talk about, right? Do what you want to do. But don't sit here and lie to us and tell oh, us. Calling me a liar with no proof. Again, just like you accuse the reaction channels of doing. Nice. That you strike all these channels every day. That's a lie. Because right. if you did. Okay. Okay, wait. Well, wait. They would come down. <laughs> because. They would come down? Okay, so. This well, that's true. Uh, you know what? If if she, if, if they, we would come, we would go down. If we were doing something wrong, if she's reporting us and ain't nobody been touched, that means we're not doing anything wrong. She swears we're doing something wrong. But if we were, why aren't we all gone by now? Right? Why aren't we gone? Stream, I'm going to show you my report history. All right. The next stream I do, because I have emails pleading and talking to um, user support from YouTube. And I'm also going to show you the email from my manager since no one believes that, but I'm going to like, how do I do that now? I guess I could take, I have to look through my emails for all the emails I sent. That's why it will take time. So. I'll okay. Hold on. M60. M60 says, I guess I can tell he's never done a DMCA because it's not that simple. Her content doesn't fall under DMCA. It doesn't fall under that. It's not a TV show. It's not a song. It's not a record. It's not an album. You can't put a DMCA on that. No, it's not. I'll do it on another stream. I've messaged them so many times, so many times, and, and brought up the fact that how do you allow this person, these people to be online when it's violating terms of service? No, it ain't to attack one person or use one person's content for a whole channel for thousands Chantal, of Chantal, I'm going to bring up two words you hate so much. Transformative and fair use. You hate those words, don't you? Because being transformative and fair use, it gives us room to do what we do. As long as we transform it, fair use. We transform the content in whatever way we can uh, by changing the look of it, changing the sound. That makes it fair use. The videos. So I'll show you those emails. Number one. Number two, here's my report history. No, I don't report every single day. That was an exaggeration, but I've reported many videos and I'll show you that. Okay. I don't have to prove anything to you, but I will. All right. Just because you're the liar here, not me. And the fact that you're, you're saying I'm a, where is it? We're go getting up ahead a little bit here. Oh. So who's she reporting? All right. Hold on. We're just going ahead a little bit because like this is a long stream. In terms of service. Okay. So what do we got? I I'm going to get out of the chat for a minute. Who we got? Who is on her list? We got Garlic Bread, the YouTube Underground, Doe Eye Cookie, Kaya. Who else? Who else? Who else? Come on. There's. I know there's more. Service to talk about one person. In okay. So let's stop here for a minute. What was the issue? What is she reporting? Look, look at what's going on here. Image or title issue, hateful or abusive content, image or title issue. Uh, Y'all can see the titles. So let's see. So Garlic Bread did one called Foodie Beauty Just Lost More Viewers. Image or title issue. What's wrong with the title? Saying somebody lost more viewers. What what's wrong with the title? Uh, Booty Beauty almost falls tried to promote Kuwait. Image or title issue. Uh, I I don't see anything offensive in the titles, but report. She's being cheap. 
She's not reporting anything in the video itself because that would mean watching the video and giving a timestamp. She's going straight for the thumbnails. Although I'm sure there's nothing wrong with the thumbnails. She's taking the cheap way out. Ooh, you're such a coward, Chantal. Target one person. So if you're acknowledging that maybe two or three Fufu Egger, that's the problem. So if you're saying, oh, YouTube would do something about it, I just proved to you that they don't do anything. And and you know what? I don't know if what Yo Mama did was reverse psychology or not. Although Chantal does work backwards. If you want her to do something, you have to tell her to do the exact opposite in order for her to do the original thing. Like with just what like with what just happened. Uh he told her, well, you know you don't report anything. And Chantal being defiant and oppositional, she's like, oh, yeah? Well, let me just show you what I'm doing over here. So I don't know if it was a her playing checkers, him playing chess move. But re regardless of what was going on, she just revealed herself. Like, this is how she's spending her time. It's during Ramadan. She should be praying. She should be doing charitable acts and being positive and quiet, peaceful thoughts. And she's not doing it. This is how she spends her time reporting people. Next stream, I'll have more receipts for you. I'll have my emails that I should have prepared for now, but I'm very impulsive. And when I heard that, I was like, I stopped everything I was doing. You know, Chantal, I, look, I doubt that anybody you're, that you're reporting is going to get in trouble. Because if you're reporting the way that you say, and nothing has happened yet. I'm sure the fact that you're reporting so many people for the same thing that has been flagged by YouTube and they're probably ignoring you. All of your emails and reports are going straight into a spam bucket. They're like, oh, her again. You know, you're probably ticking off YouTube. And if you tick them off too much, something might happen to your channel. Just, just something to think about. Like the more you keep bothering YouTube, the more eyeballs are going to be on your channel and they may just get sick of you reporting and get rid of you altogether. So I wouldn't be poking the bear too hard. You know, I just wouldn't be doing it. And I'm like, okay, that's it. I don't even know. I might've left the water running. I'm like, I'm going to go live right now because that's just how I am. <laughs> Jesus people, Chantel gets talked about on a daily basis, being ridiculed, bullied, harassed. Everyone has a right to stand up and defend herself. Yeah. And you could say if I never address it, they would go away. That's not true. Look at Amber Lynn. She hardly ever addresses any of her haters. And they still, she still has a community of, of weirdos who come after her every day for the most mundane. You know what? Let's be honest, Chantal. You don't care about Amber Lynn. You don't give a crap about her. You and Amber have gone back and forth with each other more than once. You don't give a crap about her. You are doing the same thing with Amber right now that you just did in somebody else's chat, you are pretending to care because you're trying to put a dog into a fight that is not your own. You're trying to get involved in a fight. So you will make up things to care about and act like you care about people when you don't. You're a narcissist. When you express care, there is a reason and not because you really care is because you want to be rewarded with attention or something. Stupid things. Like, I don't get it. Like, whatever. So if that's the case, I may as well just def like defend myself and say what I have to say and prove it wrong. But nobody cares about that. Nobody cares about any proof about me being right. The, in their mind, I'm wrong. It doesn't matter how much proof I show. It doesn't matter. It gets twisted. Just like you saw with the, the uh, Kibla Direction app. Like... <laughs> The fact that I even have to address that is so infuriating and ridiculous. Like, I'm not the problem here. And, and with the whole app wrong direction situation, same tactic. She does something wrong. People point out her wrong. They point it out in many different ways. She doubles down, triples down, quadruples down, still insists that she's right. And she talks the, a situation to death to the point where people just go, you're right, you're right, you know, whatever, we don't care. And then she can go, see, I was right. No, you're not right. Just people got tired of talking about it. I'm not the problem. 
You're always the problem. Gore World is a group of mentally ill and and like no oh, you better be careful saying that not just mental illness but like just but see she walked it back girl world is a bunch of mentally ill people then she realized what she said now she's walking it back a little bit she realized that the the messy puddle she just stepped in <sighs> disturbed people like in the worst way like i don't even know how to like i've never ever 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 experienced human beings so low so bored so vile so you know what Chantal I think before YouTube you spent your entire life getting away with things manipulating people lying to people and getting away with it and then you wandered onto YouTube and then YouTube became like a hall of mirrors that you could not get away from because there were just too many people too many eyes and ears watching you, listening to you, and you hate it. Because you've always probably found some kind of thrill lying to people. It's some kind of game to you. But then the more people that started watching you and noticing things and noticing details and pointing them out, the less fun it became to lie. Because you kept getting caught in your lies. And yet, you continue to be on YouTube and lie rather than tell the truth. So ridiculous and so low IQ in my life, you know, and I'm sorry, but it gets frustrating sometimes. And yeah, I'm going to speak out on it sometimes. And I'm definitely going to point out if I, ha if I have the proof, I'm going to show it. Yeah, for sure. If I, if I, if I feel like it's something like this, sure. But if it's something like in my personal life, like my visa or my ID or my marriage license, I'm not going to show you people that you vultures that you don't deserve it. It's none of your business. It's none of your business. Just because I say I'm married online doesn't give doesn't give you the right to my personal information and our marriage certificate. None of your business. You don't. I don't owe you anything. And even in this case, yo mama, I didn't owe him anything. I don't owe him anything. What right does he have to call me a liar with no proof? Just like he calls out the other reaction channels for that. He's full of it, just like them. Isn't everyone a little disturbed? Yeah, boobies, but some people don't try to ruin the life of others while doing it, right? You know, <laughs> just saying. Yeah. You're right about ALR. If anything, I feel like there's speculations, rumors get worse. It's sad. It's sad that th it, the irony of them picking apart this person and not realizing they're spending so much time on petty, stupid things. You know, like... <laughs> Oh my gosh, like that one reactor that reacts to- Look, I know Amber's another problematic person. And she's gone after different people, true. But not to the extent of Chantal. Because Amber's channel is twice the size of Chantal's, has been for a while. But even Amber understands how it works. Like Once upon a time, Amber and Chantal were battling it out about who wore the crown. And Amber lost the crown a while ago and Chantal ran with it and she's had it for the longest. And Amber got to a point where she got so desperate for someone to react to her that she started reacting to herself. And here's Chantal with the crown and yet she now she's like, I don't want to wear this anymore. Okay, then don't. <laughs> You want to go down this avenue of I'm going to strike at people and the few people that are left talking about you are going to say, screw you and go find somebody else. You're going to find out what a bad idea that is. To um, Amber Lynn, she's like, I'm so mad I could be doing something else. Why am I watching this get to the T? You don't have to be doing that. You could be enjoying your life and doing something else on for sure. They don't matter, I know, but. That's that's my point, though, is that YouTube does nothing about platform hate. They really just let it slide. You know, I don't know if they they just don't get around to it yet, if they're like backlogged. Um, but I can show you my emails go back a long, excuse me, a long time. And I've been I have been reporting. So for people to say, you know what I'm hearing right now with Chantal complaining about YouTube. This is what I'm hearing. <laughs> oh, 
I'm hearing that and this too. <laughs> I'm hearing all of that. Foodie Beauty, Beauty doesn't report. She lo likes this drama. She likes this. Oh, sure. Yeah, I just love it. Like, stop telling me. You people need to stop telling me how I feel about something. You have no idea. You have no idea. Okay? You don't know. I think he does do that. I felt like he was saying this so he can be more credible by being critical of you sometimes. Exactly, Storm. You nailed it. Exactly. He wants to be more credible and not as seem as biased. So he picks on something like stupid like this every once in a while, you know? The only thing I will say is, yeah, I probably shouldn't even address these things, you know? Or but, but you will because you need content. That's exactly why you're doing it. You have the option to, listen, Chantal, this is your channel. You could talk about anything you want, right? Anything. You can bring up any topic of your choosing. Positive, negative, neutral, whatever you want. You are choosing to whistle at everybody all over YouTube and try to bring them into your fight. You want people to fight with, and then you have the nerve to throw the rocks and then hide your hands like it wasn't me. I don't know why they're mad at me. You jump into fights that are not your own because you want attention so bad. I shouldn't do that, but like, it's hard. It's hard. I'm not perfect. I am a very reactive person. And I think me reacting once in a while, I mean, I take a lot of crap online, probably more than anyone. Like That's because you create a lot of crap online. This is not a case where you have a channel and you're doing your thing and then people just started ganging up on you and bullying you for no reason. You are problematic and you are a liar and you trigger people and you look for ways to trigger people. And you do things just to get a reaction. And then you get the reaction. And then you complain about it. Come on, Chantal. You play an active role in people talking about you. You do. You absolutely do. Like this situation here. You went into somebody's chat. You didn't have to be in there. Especially under your original channel handle. You deliberately did that. So everybody knew it was you. you. Didn't even use one of your mini socks. You were looking to start a fight. Come on now, you were looking to start a major fight. Seriously, seriously, there's no one else on YouTube. Like, well, there's like maybe a few people, but like seriously, especially over dumb petty things, you know. Like, I don't get it. I just want to stop for a second and show y'all something. What's going on here? <laughs> Booker. I know. This is what I got going on right now. Hi, baby. Hi. You're an old girl. All right. I'm going to let her sit on my lap while I finish reacting. Definitely press charges on these rats. Videos. Yeah, there's some, I'm sorry, but it's not just hate because there are definitely some that could catch cases for sure. Definitely. Like I said, if, if, if Hussey can win a case against DC over something that's not even nearly as bad, this was an on, this was just an online little beef, you know, for like a period of time. You know, this is the second time she's mentioned that somebody else's court case and I could be reaching here. But it just feels weird that she keeps bringing that up. And I know that Chantal is entirely too lazy to take people to court. It will cost her money and time to do so. She had to actually come back to Canada in order to file a court case. And, and she wants to stay in Kuwait and keep an eye on Salah. But I just have to wonder if in the back of her mind, if in her head, she's so broke She's so desperate for money. If she's contemplating the idea of, say, taking FFG to court to try to get some money out of her. Because, Chantal, if that is the thought, if that's an idea you have, you might want to put that in the trash can.
that can easily turn around on you. You don't have foodie beauty money anymore. You don't. Your money's been going down, not up. You can't afford a like a expensive lawyer, attorney. Besides, what case would you have? None. But it's funny how you keep thinking about court cases and winning court cases. And it's like, why are you thinking that way? Like, what would your case be? Why would you think be thinking about going to court unless there's something in it for you? You're a narcissist. You don't do anything unless you're looking for some sort of reward. So you go to court for what? Time. This period of time for me has been years. And I've been attacked in worse ways. So... And you don't need all kinds of money. You don't need maybe a few hundred dollars, like, you know, to start a case or whatever. But you don't need, like, thousands and thousands of dollars. Yeah, exactly. Who likes to be bullied every day, teardrop? Exactly. Luckily for me, I don't put my self-worth into somebody like FFG. I mean, come on, look at her. Would you really be offended when somebody like this is calling you names? When Chantal, if you don't care about the reaction channels, if you don't talk, if you don't care about FFG, why do you continue to watch? Why do you make the reports? If you don't care about something, you don't care. You don't pay attention. You'll stay on your channel and do your thing. Why care? At the same time, you don't care. <laughs> why put out the effort against the reactors if you don't care? It, it doesn't make sense. And you know her life, like your life has to be more pathetic when that's all your life is, is the minute you, you, you just, like, look how miserable, like somebody happy and doing well in life is not going to have a channel like this. It's right. So if you're happy and you're doing well in life, you don't have time and you won't devote energy to going after people, Chantal. Do you realize what you just said? What just came out of your mouth applies to you. A happy person who is fulfilled, who is satiated with their life, that are, they're, they're so surrounded in positivity that the negativity is behind them and they keep it there. But what are you doing? You are focused on the negativity all the time. You sit there and do report after report after report. It shows just how little you have going on in your day. It's not going to have an existence like this. You know, if you look at what she looked like when she first started her channel versus now, when we saw her at Shannon's, that hate has made her ugly. On Really? You're going to go after somebody's appearance? Ma'am. Look, a whatever a person looks like is what they look like. Have you seen yourself? If we're going to talk about people's appearance, have you seen yourself? Please go back and watch your videos from 2018, how you looked, how you sounded back at the beginning of your channel versus now. Can you really talk about somebody else's weight or appearance when yours has changed drastically? Can you really talk about the way somebody looks? Not that you should, but I'm just saying. On the inside and out. And that's just a fact, objective fact. I mean, you were a different person when you stepped on YouTube. You were like any brand new baby YouTuber. You started a channel and you didn't know what you wanted to do. And you were trying to find your way. So you were doing different kinds of content. You did makeup looks. You did uh, shopping hauls, makeup hauls. Uh, you were taking people places. You were much more active with your channel and doing different content then than you are now. But you were a different person. You specifically tailored yourself to be on YouTube and make money by being an over-exaggerated, gross, feral version of yourself. You know, you made yourself for the views. That's objective. There's not one person who's going to disagree with that. Not one. Why do mukbanging YouTubers get hated? I don't know. Probably different reasons. Are you still looking into the NDA for that trash bag, Beast Boy? Yeah, I'm I'm doing something, Beast Boy, but I can't really talk about it right now. 
but I'm working on something. I uh, can't stand how they have all advice on what you do and how you do it. Also, I'm a fatty. Also, we know if we're eating stuff, we shouldn't. Like, Kelly, imagine somebody the size of FFG talking about what you should be eating and how you have an eating disorder or, or even like they're all over. A lot of them are overweight. Okay. Most. Not someone who is super morbidly obese who screams about fat phobia and fat shaming using weight as an insult. Not her. Not her. And Chantal, there's a lot of people who don't understand EDs. They haven't experienced them. And I hope that no one experiences that or any kind of addiction or obsession because once those things get a hold of you, you're in for one heck of an inner fight. It is a battle to get on the other side of it once you get started. But I've been through that battle. Okay. I've been through it. And I don't like you getting on YouTube and putting forth this attitude of it's hopeless and there's no help out there. And I, I, I'm just going to give in. There's no hope at all. I don't like it because that's wrong. You're a person with an eating problem. You should not be doing mukbangs. Period. You shouldn't even be doing cooking content. All food content is off the table. Because you are setting yourself up to be triggered and to have B moments by including food in every moment of your life. You got to take the focus off of food. But coming online and, and trying to put forth this thing of, you guys don't understand. You, you've not been on that side of the fence of having an ED. You just don't get it. I get it. And I'm calling you out for your excuses and your whining. I got on the other side of it. Other people have had issues with food and they got on the other side of it. So why can't you? The reason why you can't is because you don't want to. Poor, it, it, that, that's, it's just that simple. You're not ready. You don't want to. You're too busy monetizing your issues and you don't want to stop. Most of them. Yaba, Sam, they're all, they don't even show themselves. Like, and, and you can guarantee they have fat women in their audience and they have the nerve to sit there and fat shame somebody. It doesn't matter if you're targeting at one person, you're making fun of everyone fat. You know, it doesn't matter if a reactor or a person on YouTube is overweight or not. Okay. The difference between those who are overweight, who might be reactors and Chantal is that those who are reactors say, yeah, I'm overweight. So what? We own it. We own it. Chantal is always trying to hide it in extreme ways through the overuse of filters, wearing an abaya, the way she's sitting, the way she's lying. She's, she's pulling her, her hijab down to her eyebrows. She's always trying to hide what's going on with her. Always lying about it. If you're overweight, you're overweight. But she's always trying to hide it. And she lies about her weight. Extreme lying. It's the lying that bothers people. When you do that. So for the, her audience to sit there and eat her crap with a spoon, they, they look hella dumb. Like they just look so stupid. They need to. Yeah, exactly. Teardrop. Uh, last six months. It's it's like if you look at her channel. If you look at her channel, it's just even YouTube. I'll show you guys the email next stream when I get it. When I come on, I'm going to show you on my other phone. They acknowledged her channel was hate. So I could technically sue the pants off of YouTube. I could definitely do it. Oh, I'd like to see you try. I would love to see you try. Try to sue YouTube. I would love to see that day. You really going to bite the hand that literally feeds you? Or the hand that leads to other hands that are feeding you as, the, as it were? Because they give you a platform and you can talk to people and they can give you super chats and super stickers and maybe contact you on Instagram to send you money through PayPal for feedy content. You're really going to slap that golden hand away, which leads to the other hands that you need access to? You think so?
you think you can take on a giant like YouTube and get away with it? Girl, you've already been canceled once. And you've already shown that you can't get on other platforms and do well. You're on Twitch and you suck on Twitch. You're hardly ever there. You had an OnlyFans. That's done. What else? Uh, you got canceled on Patreon. Is there anything left? You know YouTube is it for you. So you're going to spit in the face of YouTube? Yeah, let, let's see how that works out. F around and find out. I bet you. Because I could say I've been coming to your creator support. For years, and you acknowledged your employee acknowledged that they looked at her channel and they said, Yes, indeed, this channel's giving off hate. I'm so sorry about, about that. And they did nothing. They did nothing at all. They don't care. You know? You know, she sounds like a whiny toddler right now. Oh, I want to be on YouTube and I want to make money. But if YouTube doesn't jump when I say jump or do when I say to do, then I'm going to be mad at them and I'm going to sue them. She sounds like a little toddler not getting her way. How dare you, YouTube, act like a company and have your own rules and then not bow to me when I tell you to bow? How dare you think for yourselves? So you can't tell me that I didn't try to do anything. So... Oh, anyway. Yeah, I know. You're going to bite the hands that feeds you? How is it the hand that feeds me? Are you kidding me? When I st first started YouTube, I didn't have all these channels and people still watched me. The people that they're not, it's not going to make a difference, Fufu Egger. Those people are, are, if those channels didn't exist, if they were really curious, they would have no ch no choice but to watch my video. You think so? <laughs> you think so? Is that the what you think is going to happen? That if all the reaction channels were gone, that you'd make all kinds of money. You think that's what's going to happen? People go to the reaction channels because they don't like you. They're given the choice, either go to Chantal and watch you through your channel and support you or go somewhere else and keep track of your story. People choose to go to the reactors for a reason. They have the choice. Nobody forces them to go to the reactors. They choose that on their own. You know, when you say things like that, Chantal, it just proves how broke you are. Because when you had plenty of money, you didn't care. But the less money you receive, the more you get hyper-focused on the reactors and you start blaming us for your lack of funds. Although it's your fault because you're not streaming as much anymore. You're not doing interesting content. It's not our doing. You are destroying your own channel. You're making yourself so boring that nobody can deal with it anymore. The mukbang trend ended a while ago. And those people that are continuing to do mukbang content, they've had to step it up for real and find ways to keep it fresh and creative and interesting. You're not doing that. Look at the other mukbang channels. Look at the way they're doing things. You are not stepping up. You think you can just get on camera and eat a fast food meal and that's it? No, ma'am. You're not going to get a lot of views from that. You want to continue to do lazy content, you're going to get the views that match. You know, just barely skipping along. But it's not our fault that your views suck. And you can't force people to watch you that don't like you. Thinking that you can is a mistake. Because let's just go the other way. What if the reaction channels were not around? That means you would have to promote your channel yourself. You'd have to actively promote your own channel and get the word out there. Then what you going to do? You're not that motivated. None. It's okay. It's fine. If you want, like, it's, 
I'm sorry, but I fair use. A lot of these channels don't use my content in fair use whatsoever. There's nothing educational purpose. There's nothing, you know, um, that needs to be criticized in body shaming at all. Are you kidding? Yeah, lawsuit. I, I'm good at arguing. Trust me. Trust me. And I have valid points. Not really. She doesn't know how to argue correctly. She doesn't have any valid points. All she knows how to do is insult. And insulting is not the same as having a discussion and making valid points. It's, I'm not stupid like most people uh, in gore world. I'm not. Oh. Who can't even. Yeah. Okay. Yes, you are stupid. Any, any person who wants to get married to somebody after knowing them for two days and live in a completely different country, that is stupid. It's very stupid. Figure out how technology works or how to use a camera. Um, anyway, Jim, Jim, most book bangers who are overweight get hated for a, a, attitude or them neglecting. Attitude? What attitude? Like not liking people coming for you? Or, okay, not addressing your health issues, health diseases. How do you know the skinny book bangers don't have diseases? Like... You know, just because you don't. No, we don't, though. But, you know, the thing is, Chantal, not only do you come on and do your mukbangs, you make a point to let us know everything that's wrong with you health wise. We know all about your enlarged heart, your fatty liver, your non alcoholic fatty liver disease, your diabetes, your extreme high uh, blood sugar, your blood pressure, your, your liatica. We know about it all. You you let the audience know. You want them to be concerned. You want them to know everything that's the matter with you. So you put it out there that you're tremendously sick. Because you want that concern. You want to be surrounded from the attention that comes from being sick. And then when you come on camera and you eat lakmas or dessert or something... When people say, what is the matter with you? Like, why are you eating this way? Then you get mad at them, even though you started that fire. You told them how sick you were. Had you not done that, nobody would have said anything. Gain weight doesn't mean you can't get, it just doesn't mean the food you're eating is healthy. And, and it's up to us. If we want to ignore our diseases or whatever, it's up to us. That's no one's life to live but your own. You know, we don't owe people anything. Oh, YouTube. Bite your hand that feeds you? Yeah, if I had to. I mean, sure. I don't know. There's other platforms and not just that. I would get a job before kneeling. And, and <laughs> There's other platforms. Yeah, but you tried other platforms and you were a complete failure at each and every one of them. You weren't exactly rolling and making bank on OnlyHands. You're not making bank on Twitch. You weren't making bank on Patreon. I mean, show me a single platform besides YouTube where you have a lot of subscribers and you're making bank, Chantal. Show me one. You subscribe to a lot of different things. Show me a platform besides YouTube where you are doing extremely well. There's many different things you have people sign up to. Show me a platform where you're doing well and you're making consistent content for that platform. And people are happy and satisfied. And they don't feel ripped off. I want to know. You will make a profile somewhere. You get people to sign up and subscribe to you. They start paying the sub price. But then after that, you don't do anything. YouTube is your only choice. Even after YouTube, you know, canned your channel for a while. You are begging to get back on YouTube begging and kneeling down and accepting something you know i'm just saying i'm not saying i'm going to sue youtube i'm sure i just don't even have the mental capacity to deal with that it's not that she doesn't have the mental capacity is that she knows she has no case you a a tiny channel going up against youtube that would be a mistake um and they have a lot more money <laughs> yeah they do and they've got a case they could easily go to court and go, your honor, we gave her a platform. She's made so much money using this platform. She violated terms of service this many times. Here are the reports, all the hundreds of reports that we've received. We let her go. We gave her more room than we give most people. And then after that, we canceled her channel and then we gave it back. 
and she's going to turn around and sue us? Yeah, case thrown out instantly. <laughs> um, but it would definitely probably be a case. I'm not saying for sure I'm not a lawyer, but in my eyes, I think that would be... Um, I think that would be a case because in my opinion, I've reached out. They've acknowledged that it's hate and they do nothing. Hi G crazy part is they all know it's not right to use your content, but they just don't give a shit. But when the tables turn, they can't take it. Yeah. They block people too. They, they dirty delete too. And I love the fact that she has the nerve to come after people for not camming up. It's like, all oh, these people, they're overweight. And they're not camming up. Look what she's doing. Where's her cam? Is she camming up? Is she showing herself? No. <laughs> the nerve. I think Sam Dirty deleted her stream and said it was an accident. Sure. Sure it was. Well, how? What a coincidence, right? They can't take the heat because they don't know how to val. They don't have any way to val like argue back when it comes to down to the nitty gritty. What comes down to what's really important. Ma'am. You have no right to criticize anybody for dirty deletes when you're the queen of dirty deletes. You dirty delete your community post. You dirty delete your live streams, your videos when it suits you. You can't talk about anybody dirty deleting anything. Important. They don't know how to defend themselves. All they do is they know how to do is take sh ch uh, cheap shots. Look how she gets in and out of the the vehicle. Look how she gets out of the boat. Like you've never seen a fat person. You look in the mirror every day, don't you? You know, like, anyway, like, that's, I'm here talking about the issues. I don't care about, I'm not making fun. I don't care about Sam, what her, Sam's out, adult daughter does. Well, then why'd you call her a prostitute? Why? You liar. Like, I'm not going to hate on that. Like, some people called me a friggin' prostitute in the past because of whatever they think I did for money. But it, that was more being generous, not like. Oh, please stop going out and hiring somebody working on the street. But I'm just saying like it happens. Like, I don't care about that. I'm just saying you can't say I'm going to attack gaining grounds mother to met with dementia just because you talked about my daughter being a prostitute when she's the one who brought it on the Internet in the first place. Are we really going to are we circling back around to this issue again? I thought I, I got past it. Her daughter's about to talk, talk about up what she said like hello hi cozy yeah i do to freak they do get criticized more for being overweight yes of course like like we know what we're doing is not healthy like um it's not the point like like i say always say nobody wants to be 400 pounds you know but it's not just as easy as that people act like well then change like that's just so such a lack of that's such a that's those that shows so much ignorance in, in itself that statement right there i would be you know chantal I, i'm gonna bring something up and this is not to throw shade at this person at all it just just something to mention Everyone knows what happened to Light by Jen, who is no longer with us. She passed away early due to complications with her weight, her issues. And like I said earlier, with you, it's not a question of if, it's a question of when. Not because I'm wishing anything upon you, mind you. Is because of what you're wishing for yourself. You know you have issues with food. Severe, extreme issues that you need impatient. Because you are completely out of control. You're very impulsive. You said that. And the only way that you know to keep away from some of your obsessions and addictions is to completely move to a different country. Although that is not effective. To move to the middle of nowhere to get away from some of them because some of them is not all of them. The one thing that you're able to do, you are overindulging in and that is leading to a lot of problems. So being dry is not the same as being in recovery. 
And you cannot rely on another person to be around to stop you sometimes from overindulging. True recovery means that you've got coping skills and coping mechanisms to where you can control and monitor yourself. But you're not willing to change yourself, change your life. You want to lean on other people to be your crutch, to stop you, although nobody can stop you. How can Salah stop you from overeating if you're the one buying the food, if you're the one controlling everything, and yet at the same time you have control, you have no self-control? How is he, how is he or anybody else going to stop you if they have no authority over you and your money? It's impossible. How are you going to stop your food issue if you're monetizing your food issue? Like everything is pointing in that toxic direction of continuing the path rather than stopping the path. You being in Kuwait has been so unhealthy. You are blowing up to a weight that is insane and it's affecting everything. You think it's about fat shaming and fat phobia. Ma'am, it's about people looking at you and going, oh my God, what is going on here? It's a when situation, Chantal, not an if. If you are fighting for your life, if you are fighting for your health, if you are fighting for your recovery, there would be an if. But since you're not fighting, it's just a matter of when. And you are deciding the when. Every time you sit down and you do a doggone mukbang and you're eating the portion of like four to six people and you're consuming thousands of calories a day, you are deciding the when. And I'm going to put this out there for everybody to think about. Chantal, with her being 400 pounds, 500 pounds, in order to maintain that weight, she has to eat a certain number of calories. That goes for anybody at any other kind of weight. If you're, say, 200 pounds or 120 pounds, you have to eat a certain number of calories to maintain that weight. If you go over those calories and you're not burning them off, that's when you start to gain weight. For Chantal being, say, 500 pounds, she has to eat about 5,000 calories a day. Easily. The fact that she is eating X amount of calories and not burning them off because she's sedentary, she's gaining weight because she's also got a nasty habit of eating and then going to sleep. You go to sleep, you're not burning off the calories. So there's no activity to burn off the calories. She's just eating those calories. There's 3,500 calories in one pound of fat. If she's eating, say, seven, eight, nine thousand 9,000 calories, she's putting on a pound to two pounds per day. That's why she's blowing up so hard. She's consuming calories and her she's not burning them off. There's too much addic addition and there's not enough subtraction. So yeah, when people see you, it is shocking, Chantal. It's a matter of when, not if, because you're not fighting for the if ever. In tears all the time of someone hated on me all the time. Yeah, everyone handles it differently. And that's why YouTube should be a res more responsible platform. People should be allowed to come on here and come to work and you can say it's not a job while making thousands of dollars a month and paying your bills is a job, whether you like it or not, just because we're not sitting at a desk with a headset. OK, actually, I am sitting with a headset right now. So entertaining people. And you know what the worst part is? You, you are not grateful for your job. You feel entitled. You're not grateful. You're, you're not grateful to the people that come and watch you, listen to you, put up with your nonsense. You're not grateful for those people that listen to all your drama and trauma. You're not saying thank you to those people. You're not giving back. You're not coming online with the attitude of, I am blessed. I want it onto YouTube. I can make good money and I don't have to work hard for it. I can make my own hours. You're not grateful for any of that, Chantal. You feel entitled. People, talking to people, earning money. It's, it, you know, You're, you don't earn the money. Shut up. So people should be allowed to come to their job, should be allowed to come online. It's 2024. Everyone does something online. Um, you know, it's the internet. And 
they should be allowed to be on a platform. We, you know, like YouTube, can, we can't we can't always control what happens, but like on other platforms, but like each platform should be responsible for that, should be responsible for enforcing their terms of service. You know, so I'll try to tell YouTube what to do like and they don't they don't. And to say that I'm a, a liar because they would take these channels down. <laughs> just you just proved my point even more yo mama you proved my point that these th this platform ready set be oh this person uh g says it's not only hate they give you it's also taking your income away they have pushed such stories and twist your words are you serious we take her income away are you are you crazy lady have you lost your mind we are not taking her income away she has her channel Nobody is saying, don't watch Chantal. Don't give her money. People have a choice. Do you want to go over here? Do you want to go over there? On top of YouTube, there's all kinds of ways she could make money. Okay, can we talk about that? She could have a merch store. She could have had one ages ago. She could have set that up and made bank. She didn't. She could be on Twitch doing content, making some side money that way. She could have her only hands account if, if she weren't a Muslim woman. Uh, she could be on Patreon. She could have different streams of income. She's not using those streams. She's not putting the work in. She's not going to get the reward. Ain't nobody taking Chantal's income away. Nobody. The people that aren't watching Chantal would not watch her anyway. They wouldn't. Her story has gotten boring. So even if all the reaction channels were gone, they still wouldn't watch her there. Bees. G, loyalty bees are 24 months. Oh, wow, two years. And by the way, G, how are we twisting her words so people stop supporting her when we sit there and we put her video on and we react to it so people can see and hear Chantal? So by doing that, how can we twist her words? Explain that to me. I'll wait. How are we twisting somebody's words when we show their video and we see and hear that person talking and all we're doing is reacting to them at the time that they are speaking? There's no twisting there. None. Here's, it's not only hate they give you, it's also taking your income away. They have pushed such stories and twist your words so people stop supporting you. Exactly. I mean, like what I'm doing right now, I'm reacting to Chantal, right? You can see her. This is her live stream. That she did not twisting it at all i'm playing her words exactly g exactly thank you ready set rebies even though i've explained myself ad nauseum on things and that's another thing chantal being the borrower that she is borrowing other terms she hears on TikTok or online that term ad nauseum she got that off a of reactor that person started reusing that term and then suddenly it became part of her vocabulary. There's not one single original thing about Chantal. Yeah, exactly. It's your job. I guarantee that YouTube would not stand beside YouTube. Well, they do. They don't they don't care. They don't take these channels down. They look at uh, Swordfish. He still has a channel. How many times has he threatened violence on women? And he still has a channel. Like they don't, don't care. By the way, Chantal, about that, about Natter, you created the channel. First of all, you brought him to YouTube. It's your fault. You're to blame for that because you were so eager to weave your web around Natter and control him that you brought him onto YouTube as a way to control him and put him under your thumb and lure him into a relationship. You try to seduce him with the money and the attention. And you could have stopped him long ago. You could have thrown some strikes at his channel and gotten rid of him. You didn't. Now you can't. That's your fault. If he still has a channel. And yes, I've reported him too. No, you didn't. You liar. Like how many people have reported him? It. Uh, I use him for people who are like actually real men, male. So, I mean, you don't, you don't. It's just, they don't care. They don't care whatsoever. Like, it's not, it has nothing to do with me. It's, you know, I do my part and the rest, I just leave it up to God at this point. Oh, hold on a sec. My alert, I'm sorry, my alert didn't show. Aw, okay, there we go. 
Sorry about that, G. Thank you, G. Two years is a long time. They don't care. That's why I won't make a channel, Sheena. Anyways. So, yeah. You know what Chantal, you know what YouTube is doing to Chantal? This is what they're doing to Chantal right about now. Hey, nobody cares. Nobody cares. Hey, nobody cares. <laughs> nobody cares. Hey, nobody cares. Nobody cares. <laughs> That's what they're doing to her. Tell my book club. <laughs> yes, he's an it on um, meds. I don't humanize some. Somebody who abuses women, sorry. Not sorry. If YouTube cared, it would be a different platform, but they don't. It's all sad. Yeah, I know people think it would be boring, but like you know what? Let, let's let's keep it real, y'all. Let's keep it really real. YouTube is a company, okay? What are companies around for? To make money. To make money. They are there to make a profit and make money. They don't have to care. They don't have to be emotionally invested or connected to anybody that's under their umbrella. That's the part she's not getting. They don't have to care. They are a company. They're just there to make money. Like how, how sad, like if you just get all your entertainment from just listening to people get, you know, literally just like beat up every day. I don't know. That's why I certain Chantal, you are just somebody who made a channel on their platform. And if you make money or don't make money, that's not their business. Just like anybody else who starts up a channel on YouTube, whether you make money or not is up to you and cross your fingers and good luck to you. But they don't care. They don't care. They don't know you. They don't care about you. You're just another person with a channel. They're not that invested in you. They're just not that into you. People I don't watch. Like, I don't watch reactors. Like, I don't know. I sometimes, I don't, like, when I was in original Owls chat, there was, like, literally, I didn't have anything else to watch. She's not, she's not hateful. Like, she doesn't just spew hate all the time. I don't like people who are, like, hateful. I can't stand listening to them. And she doesn't have an annoying Patty and Selma voice. So stage five emphysema voice so i i you know like there's only you know i love the fact that i'm sitting here reacting to chantal <laughs> that live chat is not moving this is so sad to me anybody who's been part of my tarot lives man the chat is just flying by sometimes i can't even keep up with it because i'm sitting there trying to do the cards my my eyes are down on my cards and i look up in the chat she's just flying by look at her miss 100k channel like that chat is not moving. This is so sad. Certain people I can stand, but I'm sorry. I had to call out your mama on that BS because he's literally just sitting there acting all like, get off your high horse, buddy. Like, you know, what's going to be beautiful. What's really going to be beautiful. Chantal over the years, she has collected people around her and behind her to act as her own little personal private army. Mercenaries, if you will. Hire guns, if you will. Not like in the literal sense of a gun that can shoot, but you guys get what I'm saying. At some point, somebody's got to talk. There's got to be some people around Chantal that are keeping her secrets. And the only reason why they are, I'm sure, is because A, either she's paying them to shut up, or she's got something on them. But the more she keeps sinking down the drain, the lower her money goes, the more chances of some of those people starting to get a little bit of loose lipped. You know, like if you're paying people to stay quiet, Chantal, you run out of money. At some point, they may decide to sell their secrets. So you might want to get on the ball and start working. In order to keep those secrets hid. Seriously. You completely twisted what I said. Um, and you called me a liar with no proof. So I just proved you wrong. All right. There you go. And I, I'll have way more proof after that. Because I know people are going to say it's um, 
photoshopped. I know what they're, I'm at one step ahead. They're so predictable. <clears throat> I don't understand what their current issue is with. There's no current issue. The current issue is they pick apart how I pray, how I worship sitting there. Most of them don't like, where are you? Are you in church every Sunday? Most of them are probably atheists. You know, Chantal, it's, being Muslim is not the issue. There are wonderful Muslim people and the Muslim faith is a beautiful thing. It's the way you're treating it. The fact that you don't have the faith in your heart. You are using the Muslim people and the Muslim faith as a shield for your past offenses, for your awful behavior. It's been over a year. It's not like you just arrived in Kuwait and you've just taken the Shahada and you don't know about things. It's been a long enough amount of time that you should know more. And if you had any kind of respect for the Muslim people and the Muslim faith, you would be behaving better. And you're not. You get on camera gossiping and being hateful, smoking, committing gluttony, cursing. It's during Ramadan and you're doing all of this during Ramadan. You are being so incredibly disrespectful. If you had any kind of respect for the Muslim people or the Muslim faith, the least you could do is take off the abaya, take off the hijab and say, I'm, I'm the Muslim faith is not for me. Out of respect for those people in this faith, I'm, I'm not going to do this. I'm mean, showing respect for them by not doing it and just be your normal feral self, but you won't. You know, you use your weight as a shield to hide behind the saying it's fat shaming, fat phobia, and using the fact that you're wearing a hijab and an abaya and you've taken the shahada as another form of shield, in my opinion, because you don't have it in your heart. You want to cry Islamophobia and Islamophobic and, and use that as a shield when it's not. Like nobody has a problem with Islam or those who are Muslim or the Muslim faith. They got a problem with you and you being disrespectful. That's what it all is. Because who worships God and, and has a channel like this? Who is God fearing and talks about Shut up. them sometimes. <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes licking your fingers is satisfying. The best part about eating like cheesies, for example, is licking the Cheeto dust after. <laughs> and then I wash them after that. I don't know, Beast Boy. I'm not loyal to like any reaction channels. Like I said, I was defending GG because I felt super. Oh, shut up. You, you, you stay curious a little bit to how everyone's doing and what's going on. But to just listen, sit there and listen to someone just like beat on someone over and like I could never I could never listen to even if they weren't talking about me I could never listen to one of scams live streams there's no way I just it's so weird I st I'm gonna say this again I'm just gonna make this point again I think it's weird that Chantal who's known for her sock accounts like Charles Reed she'll go to different reactors get in their comment sections, go into their chats under different socks, and either she'll comment under one of her socks or she'll lurk under one of her socks. And isn't it strange, isn't it funny, that this woman who's known for sock accounts, she purposely went into a live stream under everyday Miriam looking to pick a fight. And she wanted everyone to know it was her. Like she knew what she was doing. I'm so thirsty. <laughs> I shouldn't be on here talking this much, but I didn't want to lose my passion, you know, if I wait till tonight, <laughs> but I probably should have, but no, I'm going to be busy. So hi, age alt. Damn it. I forget the name. I'll have to find. So next stream, I'll show you my emails that I sent to YouTube. And oh god are we gonna do this is this gonna be the new content y'all 
Oh, I, I'm going to spend the next six or seven live streams showing all the emails to YouTube. Is this what she's doing to kind of intimidate the reactors? Like flexing her internet muscle. Oh, look at me. I'm sending, I'm sending emails to everybody. You're all going to get it. Go ahead. Bring it on, mama. Bring it. We're ready. We're so ready. But I'll tell you what, Chantal, even if you got rid of at least half the reaction channels or all of them, it's not going to go the way you think it's going to go. I mean, look what happened to Natter. He was making good money going back and forth with you, right? And there were people that were talking about him. And then he decided he wanted to strike at everybody. And because of that, everybody said, you know what? The juice ain't worth the squeeze. I'm out. Then his views went into the toilet. His viewership went into the toilet. So you should look at that and take a lesson from that. That what you think is going to happen may not be what is really going to happen. And can you afford to lose more money? And uh, yeah, I guess we'll see. I don't know. Oh, an absent parent. Yeah. I, yeah, everyone will always have people on their side. Look at uh, Scamantha. She even had people when she was calling a woman with dementia a pickle brain prostitute. Give me a break. Give me a break. I feel bad not opening the door for someone at the store. I can't imagine being so mean to ill people. I know. Whatever. And I already apologized for that. Did Sam apologize for anything she said about Gigi's mom? No. No, not so ever. Whatsoever. You know, the whatever's going on with Sam and Gigi, that's between them. That is a fight between them. Has nothing to do with you, Chantal. How are you involved? How are you involved? You decided to involve yourself. Back out. It's not your business. You are involving yourself because you want attention. It's so pathetic. They bring up your past or critique how you express your religion. Yeah. Like, and I'm this is such a narcissistic move. This thing is not about me, but I'm going to involve myself because I want it to be about me. Me, 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 me. You know what? I'm going to call, this is nothing to do with the Muslim faith and the Muslim people. I am not disrespecting either one, but you know what? I'm going to start calling, I'm going to start calling her Miriam, me Riam, because it's all about her. Me, 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 narcissistic, me, me, me attitude, Miriam. Pretty sure I apologize for saying that about Dee Dee's mother. And I didn't dox, like, first of all, she doxed her mother. So I was saying that you doxed your mother, blah, blah, blah. And then I said the room number. Yeah, that was wrong. Whatever. That was like, how long ago again? How many years ago? So you're admitting that you doxed an elderly woman. How many years? It doesn't matter. It happened. Wrong. When you do something wrong, there's no expiration date, Chantal. It's not like a gallon of milk where you ex it, it gets expired and you throw it in the trash. Wrong has no expiration date. Wrong is wrong. You could do something wrong and 20 years from now, it'll still be wrong. It'll still be wrong. Okay? So, yeah, if you're, if you're offended by me venting here, then don't be here. Goodbye. Like, why are you here? <laughs> like and this, this is the way she's talking to the people that are watching her, her own subscribers snotty snotty attitude and she wonders why she has to buy subs the way you treat people chantal like they're disposable napkins go virtue signal when they're talking about me i'm allowed to defend myself so anyways she doxed her own mother she let the swordfish vlog at her mother's nursing home at her mother's nursing home she let her let him vlog and the video is still up showing her it don't matter that elderly woman, it was her mother, not your mother. Not your mother. Okay? It was an elderly, sick woman who had nothing to say about you. You are doxing her. For what? What did she do to you? Nothing. 
You were doing it as a way to get back at Didi. You're so childish and immature like that. Rather than just complete one, instead of just focusing on that person and keeping on target with that person, firing your verbal arrows at that person, you are a coward because of just staying on point and firing your arrows just at that person who has hurt you, you will fire your arrows at people around that person trying to hurt them. That's a cowardly thing, Chantal. You got a problem with that person, you got a problem with them. But going after that person's family or friends is a cowardly move. That is so weak. It's so lame. Room number, please. For Gigi's mom. Yeah, exactly. And I hated them both so much. Like, I hated them so much. Uh, according to you, you still do. So much, you know. And I still have a voice. And I'm not just, like, going to sit there and sit pretty with certain subjects. Oh, well, you can think I'm a bad person if you want. You can think I'm a bad Muslim. That's between me and Allah. That's not for you to judge, especially people who are vile and sitting on their high horse and are worse, worse. You know, forget being a bad Muslim. You're just a bad person. You were a bad person before you went to Kuwait. You're still a bad person now. It doesn't matter if you are a Muslim or not. You're still a bad person, Chantal. You're rotten to the core. You are empty. You are so empty. You are soulless. You're not willing to work on that either. Sinners, you can just can it i don't care i don't care i don't care what you think i'm gonna say what i want you can like i said think i'm not i'm a i'm a bad muslim i don't care that's not for you to judge that's not for you to judge oh I, like tupac said it best only john uh, don't you bring up tupac's name i no, no 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 do not bring up tupac as part of your defense no ma'am tupac was an artist and a poet don't bring up Tupac. Don't bring him into this. Let him rest in peace, ma'am. Only God can judge me. That's the truth. You can judge me, but it doesn't mean crap. It doesn't mean anything. Logical fallacy accusing another. I can't believe she's using somebody as talented as Tupac to defend herself. The nerve. The hypocrisy. Yeah, exactly. It is. It's like it's deflection 101. It's like you did this, so I had so. But what about when you when you would, when you call something out in the present, and somebody says, "Well, what about what you did a hundred million years ago?" It has no relevancy. Moot point. Next objection, Your Honor. Yeah. Who is anyone to tell anyone? Like Ahmed, they will just like make fun of me. Like when I was doing sujud, they'll make fun of the way I do sujud. They don't even show themselves on... You know what? As far as Chantal being a Muslim, whatever's going on with her, in front of the camera, behind the scenes, at the end of the day, you got to pay the piper, don't you? All debts have to be settled one way or the other. Financial debts, internal spiritual debts. You can't run from the things that you create. It, it's my feeling, my, my, my belief, that the wrongs that we do, we are reincarnated. You, you got to come back at some point and pay for them. The best we can do is go through this life and be good people as much as we can. We're going to make mistakes. But a person like Chantal, like she's she's lost her way. If she has spirit guides, they they've taken a break. They're they're on a coffee break right now. They're like, there's nothing we can do here. They've given up. They've given up. That she's not listening to them. She doesn't want to listen. You know, she's she's just mired in darkness. She can lie to the audience. She can lie to her subs. She can lie to herself. But eventually the truth will catch up with her. Camera, they're not Muslim. And they, they're so disgusting. You know, like... And how sad is that, Chantal, that those of us 
that we haven't taken the Shahada. We are not Muslim. We have more respect for the Muslim people and the Muslim faith than you do. And you're supposed to be a newly reverted Muslim woman. And you are being completely disrespectful, coming on camera, committing gluttony every single time with those doggone mukbangs, smoking cigarettes, smoking the shisha, gossiping, being hateful. It's wrong. It's absolutely wrong. Being unclean, you're not showing respect to the Muslim people and the Muslim faith acting this way. It's just, uh, they're disgusting people. Next. Coming at me. If anything, it just makes it worse. It just makes it worse. You know? We could be putting that energy into finding J. Dot. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, I'm not the one who needs to take a break. Exactly. If I talk, they judge and pick it apart. Miriam is silent. They speculate, make up impossible scenarios and judge. Exactly. They they poke, they poke, they come after me, come after me. Um, shame me in every way. And then when I when I do a reaction back, one, it's a rage. It's a rage. Imagine living your life as an adult, living in your mother's basement, for example, or with your mother. There she goes again, trying to throw shade at people in their living conditions. She's gone after people about living in a trailer. Hi, I live in a trailer, so fucking what? Um, going after people for supposedly living in a Motel 6 room. Meanwhile, Chantal, you are living in a rented space in Kuwait. A rented space is one you can't keep. And you could be kicked out of at any given moment for any reason because it's a space that belongs to somebody else. If you run out of money and you're not paying the rent, you got to go. So you really can't shame anybody for where they live, can you? Because my space is mine. Hey, okay? ain't nobody taking it away from me. It belongs to me. You can't say the same. May not be fancy, but it's home and it's my home. And I'm going to be fixing it up real soon. Trust and believe that. So you over there, like looking down your nose at people and where they live, cut it out. You can even say you have your own home. At 30, 40. Um, trying to uh, like waiting for a rage. Imagine that's your excitement. It's not about the excitement. It's just that. <laughs> Have y'all noticed that I haven't reacted in a couple of days? Because she's boring. What am I talking about here? Her sitting in a living room and making a meal. She's sitting down. She's not even standing up. What are we talking about? When she does a rage, there's something interesting there. That's why. There's nothing else, though. Like, that's just so odd to me like i can't stand people like this what you should be thinking about is man i'm so boring that the only time people want to talk about me is when i get mad i am just that bad that's what irritates me is that i have to like these people like center their content around me it's like yeah and you're mad about that you're mad about the fact that you do your content and it's so boring that people would rather go to a reaction channel and watch a reaction to you versus you. That should let you know how boring you are, Chantal. Maybe that should give you motivation to step things up and do different things and be interesting. Then more people would watch you directly. You might get subscribers you don't have to pay for. You might get some more super chats. You might get more super stickers or membership signups. You've got to put the work in. You want to do better than the reactors? Then do better than the reactors. Put more work in. Put more thought in. Stop just phoning it in and being lazy. We can't be lazy with you. You're so boring. We have to work hard to make you interesting. You know? Don't get mad at us for putting the work in and getting the reward. Go touch grass. Go, I don't know. Ugh. Do a huge glow up. I mean, I don't know. I'm I'm okay with my life as imperfect as it is. I'm very happy and grateful. I'm not sitting here. <laughs> Vanna says, do you think starving them of content ever helps? 
I agree. They pick apart anything, though. Just wondering. There's so much stuff online, Vanna. Archive channels and whatever. We could we could react to her for the next three or four years. She could stop doing live streams and videos, and just the the archive content alone, we can continue for quite a while. You're like down in the dumps, like over, like you know, like yeah, I do get bouts of depression. I have clinical depression. I'm on medication, and like it comes and goes, you know, but like I accept that. And what are you doing to fix that, by the way? Are you taking your medication? Probably not. You sitting in the house is not going to help with the way you feel. Getting out and doing things might help you. You got to get out and be more active, Chantal. Get out in the sunshine. Talk to people. Do things. Help your own mental health. Stop coming online and complaining about yours. But my life is a spectrum called ox and what gets to me is the people judging are also overweight or going through similar problems it's so weird so what somebody like somebody has to be at a certain weight in order to critique you so you have a problem with people who are say uh skinny or at a normal weight because if somebody is skinny or at a normal weight you're going to say who do they think they are criticizing me they can't relate they don't know but if somebody is overweight then they can't critique you because they're overweight too. So what's the happy medium here? I'll never tell you how to eat and run your life. Yeah, yeah you wouldn't do that to people in real life. It's like, oh, should you be eating that extra piece? Like, excuse me? Anyway, <laughs> like, yeah, I'll do what I want, you know? I'll deal with it in my time and how I deal with it. And if I don't, that's also my choice. That's also my life, you know? Who's ACS is religion? all because I'm too scared to be religious. Uh, and um, Vanessa, I'm glad it helps you in some way. My, that's up to me. How does that make me a bad person doing things living my life my way, making choices for my life. It's my life. Like, you know, I have that right. You don't have the right to tell me what to do with it. You me. know, Chantal, I'm going to be straight with you. It's one thing for you as a person that you have decided for yourself that you're going to live your life in such a way that you, you've you made your decision and your choice that you want to be 400, 500 pounds and you have an issue with food. And you don't want to correct that. You are making your own choice by your own free will for your soul, for your body, that you're going to continue on the path that you're on. And that's for you. But here's where I got a problem with what you do. You're not just doing everything offline, away from the public. You're doing a lot of things in front of the public which means there's a potential to affect people, people that you can't see. You come online, you talk about your issues with food, your supposed struggle, even though I haven't really seen you struggling. I've seen you lean into the problem rather than pull away. You talk about your struggles with food at the same time you monetize your problem. Then you put tags on your videos talking about BED recovery, BED uh, recovery journey, things like that. So you are actively pursuing and looking for people that have had those struggles and you are potentially attracting them to your channel for the sake of uh, improving your audience or um, making your audience bigger. But by making the content that you do, you might be attracting people to your channel that they are on a true journey or trying to be on a true journey, or they might be in rehab or coming out of rehab or thinking about going in. And then you being deceptive with yourself and with your content, you are fucking up people's journey to being well. You are deciding for yourself to be sick, which is one thing. But you might be triggering people to be sick also. Those who might want to be well. That's what I got a problem with. 
You're not doing what you're doing to yourself in private. You're doing it in full view of the public and potentially making other people sick, messing with their rehab, messing with their journey, messing with their wellness. You're coming on YouTube as an addict, as a food addict, and you're looking towards YouTube and Google AdSense and your audience as a means to keep the addictions and obsessions going. You're looking for that public funding. You're saying, I don't care about my health. I care about being sick. And I'm going to sit here and make myself sick. And all of you are going to watch me be sick and get sicker. And I'm going to come online after eating 10 bazillion mukbangs. And I'm going to show you just how sick I am. I'm going to talk about my high blood sugar, high blood pressure, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, fatty liver. I'm going to talk about all that stuff. And I'm going to get your sympathy as well as your money. And I'm going to get more money and make myself sick. But you're not interested in health. You're not interested in it. So you're doing all this stuff publicly. You're an addict looking for other people to pay for your sickness and your addiction. And it's not right. And I will ever speak out against that. You should not be abusing the platform for that purpose. The purpose of YouTube is for people to come onto YouTube and make entertaining or informational or creative, innovative videos to reach out to people. That's what YouTube is for. It is not a platform that should be abused by people like you that have addictions and obsessions and are looking for other people to pay for them and keep them going. You should not be using YouTube to hurt yourself and in the process hurt others. It though. That's not up to you. If you're if you're so much better, look how you're living your life. You're a complete failure. Somebody like FFG, a complete failure, having a channel like she has. Look at her you look at her YouTube legacy. Ew. Look at yours. Look at your legacy. What is your legacy? Seven to eight years. What is your legacy, Chantal? What can you say you've done positive for YouTube? You come on YouTube, you started making a bunch of money, your health started to decline. Now you're at a place where you can hardly breathe, hardly walk. Uh, you've got maybe diabetic neuropathy, your nerve damage in your leg or your foot. What is your legacy? You can't even look at us and say, well, yeah, I acted all the way the fool on YouTube and here's why. I invested money in a business and I have a house and I have a car and I'm set up for life. You can't even say that. You took that cup of blessing and turned it into a cup of poison to hurt yourself. Ew. No, thanks. No, you are just so big mad over the fact that Frenchie, she's saving for a house. She's taking her YouTube money and she's buying a house. Smart decision. She can do that if she wants to. Why are, you be, why are you mad about that? That somebody is smarter than you and it's something that you could have done had you been smart and not chasing around useless men that they're not worth anything. You're mad about somebody else being smart. About somebody else being intelligent. Thanks. You know. Literally, like if I, okay, this is how stupid some, this is how the mentality of some people, they're so, they're so against me eating. Let's say I had a baked potato. Okay. And which is a whole food from the ground and full of fiber and vitamins. Okay. Yeah. It has carbs. They don't, they can't differentiate between good carbs and bad carbs. Neither can you, ma'am. We sit there and we watch your mukbangs. You love rice. You'll, what the doctor tell you. He said, your carbs should fit in the palm of your hand. That's how much you should be eating. You said, you, you eat that amount in one spoonful. You have entirely too much carbs. Entirely too much. So you're not eating just good carbs or what you need per day. You're going way overboard. And then worse, 
you're not getting up and working off the, the, the calories, you go right to sleep. That is such an easy way to gain weight. So I'm going to ask a question right here, right now. I know you got feeties in your back pocket. I'm going to be straight up and ask you the question, ma'am, do you have feeties in your back pocket that they are the gainers? The guys that they're all into you gaining weight. Is that why you're so hell bent on gaining weight and you're gaining so much is for them? Do you have those fetish guys in your back pocket that are saying, hey, I'll pay you more money if you gain more weight? Because I'm sorry, if that's the case, you shouldn't be doing that. No amount of money is worth losing your health or losing your mobility for. I know there are different subsets of feeders. You've got the uh, the gainers that want to see you gain as much weight as possible. You've got the immobilizers that are all into watching people like yourself doing this, uh, have a hard time doing the simplest of things. Are you catering to those freaking people? You should not be catering to them. You are far too unhealthy. So let's say I had a big potato and a piece of chicken and some broccoli, they would pick me apart. Well, that's good, but don't eat the baked potato. Um, but if I came with a plate of uh, like a, a big steak with just butter on it, with bacon, they would be like, that's so good. Yeah, I lost a lot of weight doing this. Yeah, that's cool. Like what? You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Everyone just thinks they're an expert in, in nutrition. It's just- You know what, Chantal, even if we're not- you won't even go to the people that are the experts that know what they're talking about and listen to them. So it doesn't matter if people are ex experts or not. You're not going to listen either way. It's like, I don't know. People are just too preachy in general, I guess. Um, but yeah, I, I was watching a woman who, who was talking about diabetes. She's a diabetes doctor i'll have to like put her, she she's on tiktok so i don't want to get like striked for putting her videos but i'll try to make a video about it she was talking about the biological reason why it's actually fat that contributes to diet type 2 diabetes there she goes again chantal likes to do that she she if she's got a toxic corroded narrative she will look for anybody or anything or an article or somebody on tiktok to back up her messed up thinking, like the whole situation with the bed rotting. That is the thing that Chantal should not be doing because it's actually dangerous for her. Bed rotting is for people that are overworked, overstressed, overexhausted, burnt out, and they just need some recharge time to get themselves together. All she does is lay around. She needs to get out more. She does not need to be bed rotting. Now she's finding somebody on TikTok. Somebody saying, oh, it's not the carbs that cause you to gain weight. Let me tell you something. If you're eating a massive amount of calories and you're not working them off, you're going to get fat. That goes for anybody, not just Chantal, anybody. If you're eating far more in calories than your body needs, it stores it into fat. And you, when you start to decrease your calories... And get out more, be more active, you will lose weight. Her problem is that she calorie loads, she carb loads, she doesn't burn it off. That's why she's getting so big. And by the way, Chantal, when you get older, your metabolism changes. That's another thing. The older you get, the harder it is to maintain your weight or or lose weight. That's why you need to put you need to stop right now. You need to stop all this gaining. Because it like blocks the fat blocks the cells from um something about the insulin getting in the cells or something like that and that's why like the high blood sugar is a byproduct of the fat causing the type 2 diabetes and it makes sense to me because like i said like i have i do eat sweets i'm not saying i don't so don't twist oh yeah you went on camera eating sweets show yourself eating lakmas after coming on camera making a big deal about your high blood sugar you coming on camera and doing that, that was basically a middle finger to all of your own subs who you want to care about you and your conditions. You were basically giving the middle finger to those people that actually care, saying, I don't care if you care about me. I don't care if you're concerned. I'm going to sit here and ruin my health. And what are you going to do about it? 
You want to make people worried. At the same time, you're not even caring for your health. It's my words. But I always had a super high fat diet. Like I always ate a lot of fatty fast food, you know, a lot. I didn't just sit here and eat like tons of cakes. Like, you know, it's not like that. I prefer fatty food, you know. Grape leaves. Really? A scapegoat? No way. <laughs> it's the type of carbs that you eat that are a problem. You know, just like with meat, like a nice baked piece of chicken or a nice steak versus pepperoni, which is like processed meat, you know, processed carbs, even processed meat is not healthy. But I will admit, I like a bologna sandwich on white bread. <laughs> you know, I'm just going to say something. I'm going to put this microphone down because it's kind of heavy. I'm just going to say something. You know what? A lot of people that are on Chantal's side of the fence, they say all oh, the reaction channels, we're bullies. We're mean to Chantal. She's got issues with food. She's got possibly mental issues, emotional issues. We should have more sympathy for her. This is why I don't. You don't care about yourself. Why should I care about you? If you're in a position where you could easily take care of yourself and get your issues looked at and treated, you've got the money to talk to people, to go to therapists, to order healthy food, to have your own private chef to make you healthy food, tasty food, and you don't, why should I care? Why? She's had an issue with food. I've had an issue with food. She's over here putting out this attitude of, oh, it's hopeless. It's pointless. It's too powerful. I'm here to say bullshit. As someone that I had BED, I'm in recovery, bullshit. You can deal with the problem. You can get on the other side of it if you care. I don't like this narrative of, of, once you got a food problem, you always have it. It's pointless. It's hopeless. No, no, no. Problems are meant to be solved. They are meant to be solved. There's always a way. There's always a solution. You just have to find it. She's not looking for it. She doesn't want to look for it. She wants to remain sick. In every way, she wants to remain sick. She wants to get attention being sick. That's why she will never get healthy. If Chantal were healthy, if she was just an ordinary person in an ordinary town at an ordinary weight, what would there be to talk about if she had no issues? If you two came to her tomorrow and said, Chantal, you can't talk about BED and you can't do mukbangs because you have a problem with food. And you can't talk about your mental illness, whatever that might be. You can't come online and trauma dump on people. You can talk about anything else, but not those things. What would there be left to talk about? If you took away the problematic lol cow behavior, what would there be? Nothing. She's shown us nothing. There's nothing of interest. There's no passions. There's no outside interest. Nothing. Nothing. She's problematic because... That's the only thing that makes her interesting. And even that's getting boring. Not doing herself any favors. But no, I don't have sympathy for you, Chantal. I will have sympathy for someone who's got issues. They admit they have issues and they're taking steps to fix them. You are not. You purposely keep yourself sick. You're making yourself sick. You're hurting yourself for attention. I cannot sympathize with that. I won't. Eh. <laughs> so. Next. Especially if you've been using it as a company. A part of me, in me, it's a mixture. Like, I love food. Like, I really am a foodie. I love food. No, 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 no. Stop. You're not a foodie. You just love food, Chantal. Do you know what a foodie is? You know what? I know, listen, I know the React is long right now, but hey, whatever. Um, what is a foodie? What is a foodie? Dictionary. 
Foodie, a person with, with a particular interest in food, a gourmet. People also ask, what does it mean if a person is a foodie? Uh, a person who loves food and is very interested in different types of food. That's what a foodie is. So you're not a foodie. What a foodie is, is somebody who's, they're very passionate about food. They want to know all the ingredients in something that is made. They want to know the source of the food. Like if somebody's into wine, they want to know all they can about the grapes that are used and the origins of the grapes and the vineyard and, and how the wine is bottled. If they go to a restaurant and they say they eat a steak dinner, they want to know where the steak comes from. They want to know all about the cattle. They want to know how the cattle was raised and, and what, what, what feed they were given. And what makes the meat taste different versus another kind of meat. That is a foodie. Someone that they are very interested in the origins of the food and how it's made and how it's processed. You are not a foodie. Any food is good food for you. Lot. Like I'm fascinated by it, you know, like all different kinds. Like I watch food vlogs, I watch food uh, restaurant stuff, like you know, like you cannot claim to be a foodie if you're not interested in good food, just fast food. Sorry, can't won't. I don't know. You know what what I'm like, but you can't be a foodie if you're eating trash. I have binge eating disorder and it's so bad right now. Oh God. All right. I'm going to take a serious moment and I'm going to say something and it has to do with someone in her chat. This person creature comfort says I have BED and it's so bad right now. I feel like I'm not in control at all. And I'm on sleep meds that cause the urge to have a B moment. Creature comfort, I don't know you. I don't know if you're a man or a woman. And it, honestly, it doesn't matter. I don't know why you, with your issue, would choose to watch Chantal if you're trying to get on top of your issue. And she's not on top of her issue. And maybe watching her it's going to trigger the crap out of you to have a bad moment. I don't know why you would set yourself on that path because that's a disastrous path. But if you have an issue right now, and if your sleep meds are causing B moments, you need to talk to your doctor. You need to let your doctor know what's going on. Maybe your doctor doesn't know about the fact that you have BED. And that the sleep meds might be triggering it. Maybe you can talk to your doctor and he can adjust by giving you other medication that won't cause you to have those moments or urge you to have those moments. Communicate with your doctor or let somebody know what's going on. Maybe they can help you. Reach out for help. I'm saying that as someone I've been through that. So reach out for help. But coming into Chantal's chat looking for her to help you, she can't help you, creature comfort. She can't even help herself. She can't stop herself. So I'm sorry you're going through that, but look towards somebody else for the help you need, for the guidance. Talk to your doctor. See if they can help you with the urges that come from your sleep meds, okay? I feel like I'm not in control at all and I'm on sleep medicines that causes the urge to binge. A lot of the time with binge eating, we're not in control. It's like it's very hard to control those impulses. It takes like a lot of active effort and it's just like when you're, you know, it's just hard. I mean, I don't really, you know, I, I know what you're going through, Keith. And see that I'm not trying to put the spotlight on creature comfort, but this this is what I'm afraid of. That because of the way she's tagging her videos and her lives with different tags like BED and BED recovery and BED journey, it attracts people that have this issue to her channel and then they get triggered and they get affected. It's not good for her. It's not good for anybody else either. It's 
if she wants to be on this path and she wants to fuck up her own life with food, that's her decision. But affecting other people is incorrect. Hurting other people is incorrect. Shouldn't be happening. You want to hurt yourself, Chantal. Nobody can stop you. But it's wrong for you to affect other people in this way. You're doing things publicly and it's, it's clearly it's affecting other people. You should stop. Creature comfort for sure. Yeah, for sure. I know. Yep. And, and ugh, anyways, I just, I can't. These, these two though, they're vile. They've said some disgusting things. They were planning my funeral saying I should die like life by Jen. It's they're vile. They're vile. And I've just had enough. And I just like, laugh. how did we go from talking about somebody having BED to her going back to Yaba and Sam narcissist caring about yourself, putting the spotlight back on yourself. Take a moment and actually care for somebody in your audience. Ashed out. And then for your mama to come back and say, why are you calling her adult daughter a prostitute? Oh God, shut up. We've already discussed that topic. Goodbye. Next Costco was all the cheese like Costco was like a food addicts like dream castle <laughs> remember when I went on the scooter yeah you almost broke the scooter <laughs> I didn't care people want to make fun of me for being on a scooter or whatever but the scooter wasn't was struggling that's all well that's because scooters have a weight limit and clearly you were over it but it was also the same situation when you were in the desert doing the four-wheelers that four-wheeler you were on, you were over the weight limit and it could hardly move. Anyway, so they had those little holy guacamole things. Those are next. Are we talking about food? Next. It's on the <laughs> Okay, you know what? We got like 36 minutes left. And and she's just blabbering. And we're almost at four hours anyway. I'm so sorry. <laughs> This was a long one. Sorry, guys. Hey, if you can't watch it all, I get it. But this was this was one of the, the more spicy ones, so we had to stick around longer. So I hope you guys enjoyed this react. If you have, please like and subscribe and leave a comment. It's going to take a while to process this video anyway. Uh, Y'all have a good one, and don't forget to like and sub up, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Until then, take care of yourselves and each other. Bye.